Sensors online. Weapons systems online. All systems nominal. Hello, hello, good evening. Welcome once again to the Amazing Life Show. My name is Mizami, and if this is your first time here today, congratulations. You've kind of spotted me on Twitch and decided to like park in here and listen to us talk. Oh, anyway, just kidding. Uh, we are actually going to have a very special guest once again on the Amazing Life Show. Uh, this is the channel that is meant for photographers by photographers. And today we're going to have someone a little bit more special other than just coming photography. She's also a cinematographer and she is an Adobe certified trainer as well okay and uh, this is uh, something really awesome uh, in Melissa she is known as Najiha Najla she is actually a uh, Adobe certified expert and she also does training and instruction uh, and work as an instructor as well and only that she does a lot of things including uh, freelance photography and videography and uh, we're gonna have a little chat with her later on so anyway for those of you guys who have just tuned in I just want to share a little bit about my social media links so I'm just gonna get Friday to do that for me okay there we go Alright, and uh, this is actually my website over here. You can see this is my website. You can check out my portfolio over here. At the same time also, you can click on my blog. You can read my blog. It's right over here. <laughs> okay, So you can read some of the things that are uh, on my random musing or even check out some of the things that I've done in uh, previously like reviews or even uh, you know uh, some tips and tricks on photography. You can check it out over here. Uh, you can also check out some of my personal projects as well. Um, for example, some of my featured projects, which were featured by MTV Asia, in this case, uh, Silver Alter by uh, Ria Kami, a cosplayer and model, Ria Kami. Um, I also have got uh, some of my behind the scenes um, works as well. So if you guys are interested in my showreel, you can check out this section over here. And this is where you can actually see everything that uh, makes the army Zami what it is today. Okay. And for some strange reason, now your piss as black. Where I gotta fix my website somehow. But in any case, it's all cool. This is my Facebook page. You can check out my Facebook page as well. Here is where I uh, upload my latest works. And from time to time, I do share uh, tips and tricks as well as uh, some of my latest posts, giving updates on what's coming up next for the Amazing Life Show. So in this case, uh, we have uh, Najiha tonight. Uh, next episode on this coming Saturday, we're gonna have Seno Hario from Indonesia. So that's something really awesome. Um, and also, you know, if you guys are keen to figure out how you can chat with me or have real-time conversations with me, this is my Twitter account where you can see that I'm rather active, you know, and recently because Singapore's got general elections, right, so I've been, you know, a little bit preoccupied with the political situation here in Singapore, of course. Um, but this is also where I do share photography works of mine, um, some uh, tips and tricks as well. And I also do share and retweet um, some mind-blowing photography works that I've come across in my travels across the internet, okay? And uh, sometimes I also share wonderful articles by Petapixel and F-Stoppers and things like that that can help you as a photographer as well. And if you missed out on previous VODs for uh, my Twitch channel, Twitch stream, you can head over to my YouTube channel. You can check out my YouTube channel here. Um, there are playlists that I've set up that can help you find or, you know, uh, catch up with some of the previous uh, VODs. Uh, you can also watch my behind the scenes videos here as well. All right, so if you're keen on finding out how the Armizami does its uh, previous works in cosplay photography as well as epic pre-wedding theme pro uh, pre-wedding theme projects, check out my YouTube channel as well. And of course, my Instagram. Um, to be honest, I have not been updating my Instagram that much because I've been quite busy. But I've been uh, posting up, you know, some updates to my con uh, computer rig, my workstation. Uh, once in a while, I do toy photography. Still, I still upload my stuff here. And once in a blue moon, I'll go on IG live and you know have a few things to say as well. And uh, of course, this is my Twitch channel. If you're watching it here right now, I'm just gonna mute myself. There we go. You can actually head over over here to see what my rig is like. If you are interested to see what I use for my live streaming, you can also check out my uh, uh, all this. Of course, is under about channel, about section rather. Uh, you can figure out who is supporting the live stream as well. Um, under the sponsor section, of course, uh, if you want to show support for the channel, there's other ways of doing it as well. It's all available over here. Um, and of course, you know, as always, I always want to do a shout out here to my own Razor Tip stream. If you guys want to show support for this channel, there is a number of ways, of course, you can you know donate through PayPal. But 
the best way to do it is through using your phone. Scan this QR code so that it can be brought over to my Razer Tip stream. And this is where you can use Razer Gold to you know buy shots to show support for the channel. And with the Razer Gold, you can actually, you know, through your purchase of your shots, you get this thing called Razer Silver. So the Razer Silver is actually um, some kind of currency that you can use to uh, uh, accumulate and redeem epic Razer loot. So what kind of epic Razer loot are we talking about? We're looking at things like games, products like bags, mice, headsets, earphones, all this by Razer and its partners. So one of the coolest things that you can do, of course, is accumulate enough Razer Silver points so you can get an epic looking Chroma Pro sign aside over here or a Huntsman Elite which is the keyboard I'm using right now it's, it's absolutely lovely okay so um, this is really cool because you can actually show support for the live stream and at the same time you can get enough Razer Silver Points to get wonderful products from Razer okay and now of course um, if you do not wish to uh, buy Razer shots, not a problem. I would really appreciate it if you guys uh, show support for the channel by hitting the follow and subscribe button in the top right hand corner of this screen right here, right now. So um, occasionally from time to time, we do run giveaways on this channel. So please follow so you can uh, keep abreast with uh, the latest news and updates and latest episodes of the Amazing Life show. Um, just for your information, guys, in the past, we actually had given away software such as Capture One. We gave away hardware like Wacom tablets, ASO monitors. Um, what else did we give away? Oh, a Think Tank bag. Um, and right now, we do have a special giveaway for the previous episode uh, where we had Archie only for Indonesia uh, because uh, he's only able to ship the price within Indonesia territories. Uh, he's actually giving away a, a Polaroid Spectra camera from his own personal collection to whoever wins that particular quiz giveaway. Alright, so this is really awesome and I uh, just want to say if you guys are tuning in right now, you're in for a treat for tonight because we have uh, an Adobe certified expert joining us all the way from Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. We have Najia Najla in the house and I will share more information about her later on throughout the show. Uh, but before we begin, just some house rules. If you are watching right now, say hi, say in the chat box, alright, just share a little bit about yourself, where are you from, tell us whether you're from Malaysia or Singapore. Uh, it would be really cool if you just, you know, say something and say hi or something like that. Um, if not, it's all cool. Uh, like, as I mentioned before, it'd be great if you just say something. Ah, uh, look at that, it's my wife. <laughs> She's watching from the other room. Hi, Miss Desert. Yeah, so just say hi and... Uh, oh, the most important thing is that, let's say, for example, throughout the entire episode, you have questions for Najiha or even myself. Just pop them in the chat box and we'll tend to you as soon as we can. Um... If we missed out the question, just repost it because sometimes old men can't see well, you know. Nah, well, that's just the way it is. But in any case, try your best to, to be uh, active. Uh, we love to see people uh, active in the chat box as well because it feels like, you know, we are really getting to you guys and... Uh, not getting to you guys, that sounds very weird. Communicating is communication. It has to be two-way communication, okay? So anyway, more on Najiha over here. Okay, so this is her Instagram. Uh, I will post her link on the chat box as well. Uh, apparently, this is how you pronounce her name. It's, uh, I mean, her nickname is AR, not Yeah. You know, the first time I saw her name, I thought it was Yeah, and then it turns out it was actually AR. Okay, so uh, AR is uh, her Instagram handle, uh, and this is her website. Okay, so I'm just gonna post the link in the chat box below as well najihanajla.com and you can see that uh, she is an ACE and uh, she's done so many things uh, and I think one of the things that that really makes her really special and why I really want to have her on my show tonight is because not just is she an Adobe certified expert and trainer she's also an educator entrepreneur photographer and videographer editor and founder of her own company a lifetime project and she's still pretty young I mean like you know I started my company when I was 30 so you know she's got a, a huge path a hit in her future so that's really awesome okay so now let's take a quick look at her introductory trailer to her studio a lifetime project stand by
And here's Najiha herself in the house. Hi, welcome to the Amazing Life Show. How's it going? Hi, hi everyone. Thank you so much, Mays, for having me tonight. Yep, yep. <laughs> and uh, it, it's very exciting to actually have uh, uh, someone all the way from Malaysia joining us this evening because normally we, we always, you know, it's, 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 it's difficult for us to travel now because of COVID-19, right? And now, because of technology, here we are able to communicate with one another and share our knowledge openly with the rest of the world. Not just between Singapore and Malaysia, but literally rest of the world. Because sometimes we do have viewers from uh, other countries like Indonesia, Thailand. I think we have someone from Vietnam and Laos as well. Um, recently, we also had people from as far as uh, Netherlands, I think. Yeah, wow, so that's, that's really impressive. awesome. Yeah, but I'm not sure if they're available tonight because, you know, because the world is built in such a way that our evening time is their morning time and most of the mm. most parts of the world right now is beginning to open up because you know the the virus although it's still around it's starting to kind of become more controlled and managed but i think malaysia is also something like that right right now yeah but uh alhamdulillah we're able to manage and we are getting a fewer fewer cases day by day mm, that's i good. kind of like would like to um compliment and uh, saying that really good job to the government and also for the malaysia and also the whole nation's actually trying to trying our best mm -hmm. uh technically um taking taking care of ourselves and trying to reduce as much as possible the yep. cases for the COVID 19. So and i think thumbs I think, up yeah everyone. thumbs up malaysia bully well done <laughs> okay so it, it's very good uh to see that uh, things are getting back to normal i really hope that singapore also be similar because right now in singapore just to share with you guys um we are starting to see a little rise in the number of cases right now we have uh, some issues with uh, the eastern part of singapore right now apparently there's a cluster there as well um and the number of community cases are on the rise but still within manageable numbers so i really hope that you know people will still put on masks when they go out you know and and observe social distancing and try not to go out if you don't have to and avoid crowded places and basically keep yourself hygienic and clean and i think that's that's very very important but uh, anyway, yeah. Uh, right now we have uh, Najiha in the in the house, and I'm really excited to see uh, what you have in store for us today. Because I, I heard that you're gonna do a little presentation of sorts, some kind of demonstration on a, a new software that you're trying out. Um, but of course, you know more on that later on. Um, mm -hmm. Before all that, tell us more about yourself. Um. So hi everyone. My name is Najiha Najla. You can call me. Um, Natch, mm -hmm. and uh, or you want me to call me ER? So technically, my close friends, my family, they all call me ER. Oh, but it's, there are it's people, ER or ER? There's a there's a different ways to pronounce it. <laughs> uh, it depends on how you met me. And honestly, right. if you're like a, uh, my close friend, someone who like know me from since I was a kid, mm -hmm. the, my my nickname, my kid's name, my child name would be ER. Mm -hmm. But uh, my friends from my Kali, my, my Kali also, my friends from my university, they called me AR. So, uh, and then um, when, I, when, I was, when I'm teaching, technically, mm -hmm. I always address myself as uh, Miss or Natch. Like, simpler way to say it because I, think, so I don't think names. everyone able to, like, you know, call ER, AR. It's very hard. I don't know. It's like... It's, Kind of uncomfortable at one point. So yeah, you can call me whichever you want as long as it's a good name and I I right. know that's my name. Okay, so so when I first met you, I called you, yeah. <laughs> I don't think that uh, wasn't yeah. right. Everyone at all. does that. Actually. Really? <laughs> yeah. Whoever came and is like asking me, hey, how should I address you? What should I call you? And I'm just like, oh, just call me Nash. Just call me Nash. <laughs> but some people be like, it is A R E R. Yeah, yeah. They keep I, I got on confused at one point. And making like faces and expressions just to pronounce <laughs> my name i was like okay okay so it was quite entertaining it's... to actually pronounce your name at the first glance because uh I, I was telling myself i don't think this is how i pronounce it but if i'm wrong i'm so sorry and turns no out worries, that i was no wrong <laughs> i think okay. i think you, you did it right er you call me er right i i, I think i call you ar amongst uh, uh, a lot AR, of other things yeah. <laughs> yeah. that's that's good that's going okay that's oh, right. Phew, right 10 points for gryffindor for me then Okay, so, <laughs> <laughs> alright, so if I were to have you to uh, just choose only five words to describe yourself, uh, what would those words be? I think I am passionate. Passionate? S sometimes impatient. Impatient? <laughs> um, I like things fast. I like fast. I like, I cannot be in a stagnant places. I like to mm. move around. Okay, so. Uh, I am like kind of a grow driven. I like to grow things. Grow I like to develop stuff. 
Um, I kind of like easy get boring or uh, get bored with something which is the same or same environment. So I always try uh, the best way to upgrade myself in a way. Right. So that's why you can see I'm trying a lot of things in my um, care in my you know like since I started um, photography and also photography. So I I tried different genre. I didn't really focus on only just mm. one thing because I feel like um, if there is a potential for me that I able to discover. So I say to myself, oh, why not? Right. So I don't know. Like, is it five words? I think it's more than that. You you get, literally gave me five essays, not just five words. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's okay. It's, it's all good. So I, I think what I can gather is that you are someone who's very innovative. You're always looking out for the next big thing. You don't want to stay put. Uh, in other words, you make a very good Singaporean. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just I kidding. should apply for you this should... position. <laughs> I, I think we both should exchange. Uh, have some kind of cultural exchange soon because I love Malaysian food. I I've oh. not been to Malaysia for so long now. I really miss Malaysian food. I always tell my friends. I think uh, nasi kan- kandaha is it. Nasi Kanda. Nasi Kanda. Oh, I can't pronounce it. Pronounce it Kanda. I don't know why. Penang. You uh, love Penang? Penang? I love Penang. I, I went to Penang uh, last year. Or was it two years ago? I think it was two years ago. And I really uh-huh. enjoyed myself there because the, the food is fantastic. Um, mm. And I and I love the the, 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 the countryside in, in, in uh, Malaysia. I went to Malacca before. Very chill. Ooh, um, the very Chendo historical. There is Malacca so is very historical. Yeah, very historical. So yeah, yeah. I, I really love uh, the, the cultural aspects of Malaysia. And Kuala Lumpur, so fantastic, Lo- lovely city, so many things to do uh, in, in both day and night and it's like the city that never sleeps, you know. Um, mm-hmm. You should come to Kelantan, have you been to like I've, the I've east to area of Malaysia? No. Have you tried Nasi Dagang? Nasi Dagang, nasi yes. Nasi Kerabu? Yes, those two I've tried before, yes. Uh, but I don't think they're the real deal because I tried them in Singapore, it's not the, the, the real food, I think it's like <laughs> fake food, <laughs> it's not the real thing. You yeah. should come, you should come to my place. I, I, um, I grow up, I grow up, I came from my asal. Oh, okay, I came from uh, Kelantan technically, ah, but okay. I, I'm based in Damansara right now. Right, right. But I am originally um, born and also raised uh, in, in Kelantan. Kelantan. Okay, mm-hmm. so, so why, why move from Kelantan to Damansara in the first place? Um, technically, uh, because of the job and also because um, when I was, when I first starting in uh, becoming the Adobe Certified mm-hmm. uh, as a trainer as well, so we have only one authorized training center, Adobe Authorized Training Center in Malaysia, which is located in Cyberjaya. Mm. So that would be the main reason why I have to move right. Um, from Kelantan, right? Uh, so that was, and from there, um, I did um, year or like, one year and a half uh, full time as mm-hmm. a trainer over there and then that's when uh, after that I grew my own business and my own freelancing life that's when I started to do part time mm-hmm. in that center and now I'm also freelancing teaching on my own so so in a span of like uh, two and a half years ish around there um yeah uh, uh, in KL in Damansara you yeah. mean yeah, yeah, yeah. It has yeah, almost three years already almost three years mm-hmm. oh fantastic mm-hmm. so let's backtrack a bit and go back in time further like uh for example, what do you study back in school? Um, I graduated from University of Technology Petronas, mm-hmm. which is in Trono, Pera. Um, okay. And I took software engineering. So technically, it is not even in the creative industry <laughs> field. I wasn't in that. I didn't even, we didn't even have a um, Photoshop or any Adobe uh, related mm. programs or faculty or, you know, courses uh, in UTB because we are under... We are 100% um, engineering school, all right? Um, we have civil, we have electrical, and I am. I was in um, IT, technology, mm-hmm. and yep. also business uh, system as well. Uh, and uh, so, yeah, I gra- gra- graduated as a software engineering. We do codings, we do HTML website and all, but we don't do Photoshop. Totally different from what you're doing now altogether. Yes. And, and uh, the, the thing is, I, I'm beginning to notice a trend. Whoever I bring on my show, they always end up doing photography or videography and when they first started in school, they had done absolutely nothing to do with any form of media practice at all. So, I don't know, maybe I should just start a club. <laughs> you know, like, all those people who have quit engineering the are now... The club. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's kind of funny. Um, right now, I'm actually watching the chat box. Uh, I can see that my wife is watching, Miss Desert. Uh, we also have uh, Nisa001. Ooh. Yeah, Najla. I, I'm not sure who she is. I think she, she could be a friend or a fan of yours. Um, yeah, hi Nisa, thank you so much for dropping by and join us. <laughs> so you know her as well? Yeah, I think I think she replied to my uh, stories, uh, my IG just now. Ah, okay, fantastic, fantastic. And it's lovely to see more people coming in to watch because I think 
uh, a lot of people, especially younger ones, you know, when they they watch you work, uh, sharing your works and so uh, and, and so on, it's it's inspiring. I mean, like um, when I first came across your works and I, I came across the the things that you do with uh, on Behance and all that, for example, and I can mm-hmm. tell that you're very passionate about your subject and. It's it's not stilted, you know. A lot of people would be like, ah, okay, you know what? I'm just gonna do this training thing, video thing because I need the money. But in your case, oh. I can really mm-hmm. see that you really want to educate people. You just want to share your inform uh your your knowledge with people, and it it's very sincere. That's that's why I can feel you know that the sincerity is there. Yeah. All right, mm-hmm. um. And so I think I um sorry I sorry to cut you out, mm. but uh, I think that happened also because my mom is a teacher. Ah okay. Ah, I think maybe I got that <laughs> um teaching skills from her as well. <laughs> well, well. Does she always treat you like a student at home? Uh, you know, making you do tuition work and things like that, or does she just impart like, her skills as a teacher to you? Um, once an educator, you're always gonna be an educator That's regardless true. of That's where true. you are. <laughs> so technically, my mom is gonna school me wherever I am. Uh, even I was at <laughs> home. So, but of course, my mom not teaching at Obi lah. Ah. But still, the way her. Uh, she educating all of us mm. um my kid uh, my kids my, my siblings as well yep. so it was yep. like uh, amazing to have a mom uh, my That's mom fantastic. as a teacher as well yep. mm. and and uh was she a very strict mother and teacher kind of she's actually an uh ustaza oh. so you know like ustaza very with the rotan and oh, like yeah. and some, uh, <laughs> she's strict okay but That's good. but not, but um i'm blessed yeah. having her as a, as a yeah, it, it's fantastic to hear it because uh, I think one of the key things in a good upbringing is uh, you know good discipline um, inculcated by, by, by the parents and I think uh, it, I mean you turn out well I guess <laughs> so it's all good yeah Alhamdulillah yeah. and uh, you, you did mention before that when it comes to anything Adobe you are self-taught so mm. how did that happen how do you get so good um, thank you so much um, <laughs> technically um during my final year uh, in UTP, uh, that was the first time ACA Adobe Certified Associate Championship uh, were had in Malaysia. That was mm-hmm. the first time they have in Malaysia. So um, during that time, I was in my 20. I was I was 22 years old, if mm-hmm. I'm not mistaken. So that was actually the age limit to enter the competitions. Oh, wow. Uh, so I have no idea how on earth our university get the invitations mm-hmm. because technically when I entered that um, competitions, most of the participants came from uh, UNITA, you have uh, Segi College, you have a lot of um, university with uh, multimedia and also artistic or digital or design mm-hmm. uh, faculty. So, and then we are the only one, Petronas, the UTP, the only one um, engineering school that entered the competition, that, en- that entered design competitions. Wow. So um, I just want to share a little bit of my experience sure. during that year because I think this is how I started my creative journey in a way. Um, during that time, I was actually kind of busy with my FYP. I was at my final year. Mm-hmm. I was like busy preparing for my Viva and also Sedex. So, uh, and then we have these competitions. And the only reason why I wanted to enter this competition in the first place, it was because um, I just want to try to uh, like, you know, added more value to my resume mm-hmm. because we are going to graduate at one point. So we need, we are try, like maximizing as much as a lot of program and activities in our resume so that it can become like impressive resume to yep. apply for the job, all of that, you know. So I just wanted to have like auto mention Adobe name in my resume, even though I didn't win or whatever, <laughs> I didn't mind. I just want to have that recognition it's like, oh, I joined this uh, competitions like organized by Adobe, things like that. So I just want to have that point. Mm-hmm. So um, when I entered and we, of course, we have a shortlisted and then we have top 10. And by that time, I was the only girl who joined that competitions from wow. our universities. Wow. My friends, all my classmates, all they are guys, my best friend also, they, are, uh, they joined the competitions and I was the only girl. But I don't mind because I just, like I said, if I able, I wanted to do it. Right. It doesn't matter how it's going to turn out. If I feel I able to do it, let's see how it goes. You see, mm. um, so technically, um, the submission was on thirtieth, if I'm not mistaken, mm. and I was uh, I have only like two days before the submission because I was so busy with my Viva, mm. pretty close, and yeah. technically I had nothing on my canvas at the moment. <laughs> oh wow! I'm not so... saying I'm a last minute person, uh-huh. but 
priorities, right? <laughs> 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 so, um, uh, I still remember there was one time I was uh, during that night, I was like finding ways on how to make this poster because uh, uh, the task that has been given for us, we have to create a poster that shows or encourage uh, funding, get donation to um, help poverty, things like that oh, in Sabah. Yeah. So it was actually like um, CSR kind of movement of mm. posters, things like that. So. And then we had these pictures, but how can I turn that pictures into something that can deliver messages? And plus, during that time, my Adobe knowledge was quite limited. I mean, I, did, I didn't really explore all of the uh, software yet. Yep. And I didn't even know on how to use Illustrator at that moment. The only thing that I used back then was Photoshop for my Viva poster, mm -hmm. uh, Premiere Pro, because I love edit videos. Yep. Um, technically, I started from videos. Yeah. Not some people start from design, right? But I started mm -hmm. from videos. Um, and then during that time, I was the only thing the, in during when I was creating that poster, I used Pento in Adobe Illustrator, and it was like very minimal minimal knowledge on Pento. So if you notice, uh, I'm not sure if, if you're able to see the poster on my website. I have that poster that yeah, maybe um, you can share how it. I want. Is, is yeah. it still there? So maybe you can just share your your website. That would be really cool. Ah, uh, sure. Let me see. And uh, apparently, yes. seriously, Sarah SG has redeemed hydrate, so that means both of us have to drink water right now. If you have water with you, you can uh, actually drink water. <laughs> it's part and parcel so of the chat. Yeah. Can so, you see my screen? Yep, I can. So I'm just gonna drink water uh, because you know the chat. Okay. So the, the, okay, this this is the poster <laughs> that I did. As you can see, it was actually a picture of a boy, mm -hmm. and our and in the first place, if you're able to see it through, he yep. was actually wearing a short pants ah. and also just a t-shirt mm -hmm. but i would like to give an idea of if we do donations and help them to overcome poverty we're able to send this kid to school wow that was my message because honestly when i was thinking i am i enter a design competition of mm. course all of the participants will be so great and amazing in designing because they are from designing schools yeah and of course with my limit uh, limitations are uh, in uh, design knowledge I will try my best to do something that deliver like very really strong message instead yeah. of um, showing my skills and also how I can do it designing, you see. So technically I was just like utilizing whatever I have in me at that moment. But I gotta so, say that this is a very strong concept because uh, it's not just about execution but it's more about the story you want to share uh, in terms of uh, you know how, how you can actually help eradicate poverty and uh, what if which is which is what is sharing uh, what you've done in, in this design you know the the, the bag the, the neck the school tie uh, the pants you know actually he doesn't have any of those but you actually drew it in so it's more like Illusions. a what if i think it's a very powerful message altogether and this is this is a winning entry in terms of concept <laughs> and execution well done this is brilliant thank you so brilliant. much thank yeah. you so much that's good so yeah i was just like using a pen tool and that, because I only know how to use pen tool during that time in the last printer. So <laughs> and I still remember I was even asking my close friend, my roommate, like, oh should I make it black and white? Or should I have like colours? You can see I was trying to reduce the colour for this one. You see mm. it's it's still like black and white over in some of the colour. Because if I make it all black and white, I can I I'm able to put the words, you know, because the colour will be like too striking blending with the words. Mm. So I have to like, you know, I asked my friends for opinions, my close friends, all of that. Technically, they helped me a lot in yeah. terms of um, finding inspiration, also helped me, you know, like giving feedback. So, yeah, it wasn't like 100% my own work, I can tell. Uh. There's always people with me that help me to get through things and also giving me ideas. I always ask my friends a lot when I have like things in my head but I, I'm able to do and, and like you know you, you questions uh, yourself like you're confused whether can you do things properly or not mm. so I always have feedback more from my friends so That's technically good. it's not a one-man kind of job it's always people around me who help me a lot so we, we gotta add you know uh, just when you describe in five words we gotta add a six word humility <laughs> You're humble. Okay, ah, so that's that's really awesome. So much. That's really awesome, and, and and it's good that I'm the one to say it, not you. <laughs> That'll make more sense. <laughs> yeah. So okay. anyway, anyway, um, uh, Naja, sorry, sorry. Uh, we we need to do something here because, uh, seriously, Sarah actually redeem hydrate, so you actually have to drink water. It's it's the rule of the chat. <laughs> I don't have uh, water with oh, me. Oh no, you, you should have water because we're gonna be here for two hours. <laughs> 
because when I was doing the live on on Behance, because uh, if you guys check on uh, check uh, or like watch my streams mm -hmm. in Behance, I did like two hour stream straight. Yeah. So one of the tips I got from my friends is don't drink water too much because you have no time to go to the toilet. That's true. That's true. That's true. And that's what so the that, EFQB is for. <laughs> yeah, I think that's why I'm getting used to like not drinking water. But I had my dinner just now, so mm. I think I'm I'm gonna All be good. fine. All good. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh -huh. Let me let me share a trick with you, and I hope that the viewers here will not feel offended in any way. Sometimes when they tell me to drink up, I'll just like, mm. but there's <laughs> no water going in. <laughs> uh -huh. Just just. It's called chemistry. <laughs> yeah. So tricks of the trade, you know, uh, just raise up, you know, drink up if I want to, but if I cannot, then I'll just, you know, put it to my lips and just wet my lips a bit and then put it down and that's it. Yeah. Tips for the trade. Because um, uh, so, one of the things about uh, live streaming is that uh, I agree with you, you know, two hours non-stop can be quite taxing, uh, but um, you know, it, it's all good to keep your, your lips uh, moist. Otherwise, you have cracked lips, and uh, for me, especially, I hate my lip balm. Sorry, you you have your lip balm. <laughs> I don't put on lip balm. I'll probably end up looking like a super villain or something okay. like that. <laughs> okay, and and uh, you you also uh, actually started out your own company called a lifetime project, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. just now you did mention that you know after one and a half years in Damansara, you decided to like start your project. Uh, sorry, your your company and all that, but. Um, how did that transition happen? Like, what made you decide? Like, you know what? I'm gonna just just start a company uh, out of the blue, or is it something that's calculated? Something that you prepared, uh, or is uh -huh. it a dream come true? You know, um, considering that you were in engineering school and then you decide to go mm -hmm. into media, and after you got is uh your your Adobe Certified Expert uh certification, um, did it all become a plan, or was it just like, you know what? I'm already certified. Let's just go for it. So which one is it? Um, technically, I started my, I founded my own company before I become a uh, SE. Oh, okay. I started during my university years, 2015. Mm -hmm. um, that, that time I was in my internship. Mm -hmm. So technically, uh, you know, when you went to internship, you have your allowance and money, right? So yep. using that money, that's how I got my first camera. Ah, I see, I see. So, okay, uh, I'm connecting the dots camera, here together now. That makes, uh, sense. Okay. that makes sense. Uh, so that's how I started. Um, mm. uh, before this, during my university years, before I have my own camera, I, I borrow my friends. You know, we have this Mac Tech Club, we call it a media technology club in yep. UTP, where they actually help youngsters, people like us who wanted to get into photography, photography. They provide camera for us, and then mm. we can do projects, we enter competitions. So, um, competitions that I went internationally before the ACA would be. Um, uh, call it English something I, I cannot remember but it was in Jakarta oh wow so okay. that was our our uh, my first video competitions with my team with my friends mm -hmm. so that's how uh, and then during that time we UTP also won the whole the whole uh, as a like you know we call it the whole the whole competitions meaning we have we have a lot of um, segments inside right. we have videography we have new casting we have storytelling all of that and UTP uh, win as a whole I, I don't have the picture for me. It's like a full sweep then. Yeah. Uh, awesome. So uh, we, we, yeah, we won the full swing. So wow. um, that was our first. And then I got a laptop from it. Um, that was like a lot of sad story also uh, oh, during yeah. that competition because uh, I didn't have a proper laptop when I was doing my first editing um, mm. for the competition. So technically we borrow um, our friends, cameras, our friends, laptop, all of that. And when I won that um, that competition, so we got a laptop, and then we used all together as a club. It was really fantastic. Um, there's a lot of lot of um, funny moment, also funny story as well during mm -hmm. the competitions. But it was a it was a good it was a good start up. Yeah. You know, like uh, I just want to share a bit on that competition. Yeah. There was sure. um, we have to submit a video mm -hmm. within forty eight hours. We are given forty eight hours <laughs> to create the videos. So oh, we man. have to go shoot. You, uh, they give they give us like a topic. You have to find a concept for it. How you wanted you wanted to have like a POV kind of concept, or you wanted to have like I don't know story storytelling. Um, um, I don't know like um voiceover kind of thing. So yeah, it depends yeah. on you. So in. we had yes, we had forty eight hours to shoot, and we we did a shooting. I was we had we have two teams. So mm -hmm. I was with my friends, uh, three people. So we shoot for two days straight, and then. We and then not two days, like one day and a half, and mm. then we allocate another half of a day to do to the edit. editing. Right. Like you know, because the next day before twelve, we have to submit. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. And then um, during that night, I was struggling with the editing, and suddenly I said to my friend, "I don't feel it." Can wow. you imagine? We were like, <laughs> we had we finished shooting for like one one day and a half, mm-hmm. and then suddenly I said, during that night, we have like, I think less than. 10 hours before the submission and I said I don't feel it. Oh, I yeah. feel like this is a trash work. Oh I, no. I I I have no confidence with my work and I said because I am the one who edited my friend was just like helping in terms of uh, graphic or maybe just like adding on uh, yeah. visual effects but yeah. the whole timeline the whole workflow the whole video I was the one who responsible to edit it. And you just so don't feel it I, Yeah. So I said um I don't think I can do this. I don't think I was like doubting myself last minute. I was I was like, I feel like I was the loser. I was the one oh, who no. actually going to fail all of us. Mm-hmm. I kind of like disappointed with myself at the moment, honestly. And 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 we 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 have like half big video during that time. And it and then suddenly it was Subo, you know, like Subo is done, right? Yeah, so done. Yeah, done, right? Subo. Mm-hmm. Huh? And then uh, I went up uh, for prayer, and then by that time we have no finished video yet. And we six have like left. six hours, yeah. six hours more to submission. I was like, I don't know how to submit this. And I said, I don't want to submit this because I said it was going to humiliate. Uh, it's going to be embarrassing for mm. the UTP to mm. submit this kind of uh, project. Yeah. You know, because we are holding um our UTP university name, right? Yeah. And during that subo, after I pray, and during um that sujud after I pray, I have this idea, a new concept totally about the videos so we kind of i went down i knocked to my uh, my friend's uh, room and i said i have this idea let's make this so we 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 trash over we we remove we get rid all of our one day two days work and we reshoot a new thing for less than one hour wow <laughs> <laughs> it was a crazy deal um and then um and then we just have a very small concept which is We have a chair in a room, and we invite our friends to talk about the experience because the, the 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 topic that we need to carry was inside AEO, which is inside of that competitions. Mm. How you can tell story, uh, with that concept. Right. So I had a friend, as I said, because I said, uh, I I I wake up everyone in the morning. So sorry for that. I still feel bad. <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then I said, okay, we have a chair. We are going to interview you. No script. You just have to tell me how you feel about these competitions. So I just interview everyone, all of that, uh, who 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 went to the competition, who becomes like participant as well, and then we have a full videos, and we have to submit. And by 10 or 11 something like that, we have to go to the place to mm-hmm. submit the uh, the videos. Yep. I was in the taxi. I was writing the subtitles. I was typing. Oh dear. I was still doing the subtitles. Because one of the rules and regulations you have, you need to put subtitles. Mm-hmm. So I was like, and then my my sir was like trying to um, delay the submission at one point, <laughs> and he was like, so uh, I think um, God also helping us because one of the judges are also quite late, at like half an hour late, so wow. we still have ample time. Lucky, to, yeah, to 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 do that, and then and then we just like submit. My my subtitle also was like halfway done. Because when I was to finish it, during that time I don't even use uh, Premiere Pro. I was using Sony Vegas. <laughs> Hello, oh I gosh. came from that. Yeah, okay, yeah, it, it's from it's that. kind of funny that you actually shared this story because uh, Sarah is watching right now. Both of us were part of this uh, project called the Forty Eight Hours uh, Film Project in Singapore as well. Similar to mm-hmm. you guys, wherever you shared with us, it feels the same. It's exactly the same, and we you use Sony Vegas tens. as well. <laughs> I think it was yes. kind of funny. Um, And Sarah then, says, um, say you know, but that's why we after we <laughs> after we submit the videos, mm-hmm. uh, one of the judges came to us, and then he shake my friend's hand because the judges was uh, was a guy, okay. so he said like congrats. So I was like, what? I mean, it was kind of impossible for that for that video to win because it's like half big, like last very minute. you felt very last, last minute, minute like suddenly we changed the whole concept, all of that. So I was like, oh, what is happening? And then the <laughs> the judges also gave us one of the one of his card. Oh. Which is I don't know where I put it because you know I was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have business card at the moment. Uh-huh. I don't even have proper email back then. All of it. It's a very very interesting stories. And then during that night, they announced the uh, winners for it, mm-hmm. and 
uh, technically, uh, we have two teams, right? One of our one of the teams already are winning the winning the one of the section or segment of the competitions, and in a for our segment, we we have like top ten and also winner. Right. Whoever inside top ten, we able to give a uh, points to add points as a, accumulatively to our um we call it to our team to the whole team, right? So we said. I hope like all all of, most of the ATP participant are uh, already won lot of uh, lot of like lot of awards already. Mm-hmm. So it's just our part, our team that does, doesn't want any doesn't win anything. So we we kind of like hoping at least we get top ten so that we can able to contribute points. Yep. And we got top ten. Wow. We just asked for it. I we we I, we had, we didn't expect for it to win at all, but we got top ten. So we we just like no, actually we got. Top top five. Top five. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Nice. Uh-uh. Nice. So congratulations. This is like a very cool origin story, and the fact uh-huh. that you actually you know if, if I were your teammate, I'll be so stressed out. You'll be like wake up in the morning, you'll be like huh. What, what? Then after you just say like oh, guys, yes. we have to reshoot everything. How many hours do we have left? Six hours. Six. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> if if you were to tell me that straight in my face in the morning, I'll be like I'll just look at you like no, <laughs> it's impossible. <laughs> Oh wow! Yeah, but that's that's a very epic like story. That's a very mm-hmm. epic story, and and uh, you did you did share that you know everything's borrowed, borrowed cameras, borrowed laptops, and all that. Um, and I guess I guess it's it's really good to have friends who are willing to share, uh, their their equipment with you because, you know, without these folks, I I don't think you guys can even start on anything. Sure. You know, sure. it's it's impossible, mm-hmm. and um. Let's say for example, right now we talk about your life choices as a videographer or even a photographer or a you know a content creator or media creator or media practitioner. Um, mm-hmm. Is there anyone who had an impact on all these life choices? Um, I would say my friend. Which, which um, friend? Um, my friends. Uh, I will say. Uh, so guys, remember I'm mentioning you guys. Say on the on the mentions. Uh, my I have like a gang or like a close friend in my school. Mm-hmm. Uh, we are from Mahad, uh, girls' schools only. Yep. So we have a a group of friend calls Two MK. You want to know uh, what's the definition of that Two MK oh, number Two MNK. Okay, what does it mean? Okay, it was actually funny. Sorry, uh, we always uh going for recess, right? Mm-hmm. And we 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 went to recess together. And then during the recess, there's a lot of like uh table in our canteens, right? Yep. So there's one table, the big table that's like attached to one another. So it's actually two tables. Right. But so it's going to be like a huge table because it's attached, right? Mm-hmm. So we always sat at that tables. No one ever going to sit over there. It's just us. <laughs> so we kind of like own the school. Your own table. <laughs> All right. Cool. So cool. everyone knows like, oh, the gang going to be there. No one sit over there. Things like that. Mm-hmm. But we are not like uh, brutal or like gangster. We don't. We, are not. <laughs> okay. we just like... Uh, no tickets, okay. and then um, so so that table was two, right? So the two MK came from dua major canteen. <laughs> I oh, know it's man. lame, but that's the story wow. behind it. <laughs> I, I I was you know when you were talking, I was like racing through my mind. What does two MK stand for? Two, two major something, two <laughs> Malaysian something. I, I I was like, what is K? And then after you say two major canteen. Okay, so that's basically two canteen tables in English. Yeah. So they are wow. my they are my <laughs> friends uh, since we were like from three. Mm. So it has been like more than ten years wow. until today. If you if you visit my IG, you can see I have like uh, we always like see each other during our one of our weddings. So we have we have actually a lot. Oh, you we mean wedding projects, not like your own weddings, right? Thirty-five of us. Right. Thirty-five people of us, you know. Uh-huh. So it's actually a lot. And uh, um, whenever we have a weddings, like one of our friends get married. Oh, okay. So we always, we always like kumpo and gather, you know. Mm. And then we have, and sometimes we we gather for like twenty people. So we are, we are many. So they are the one who always supported me since I was like, who always believed in me in the first place. I believe until today. So yeah, they are the one who like drive me. Drive Excellent. me forward technically. Mm-hmm. And uh, are they watching right now? I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> they are not into this tech stuff, I think. Ah, okay, okay. No worries. Uh, maybe you can just link them to VOD later on so they can still watch it. But uh, this one is recorded, right? Um, yes, it's recorded, so you can actually watch the rerun in case you missed it. Yay. So I'll put it up on YouTube as well. Um, 
quick question because um, a lot of people who have come on the show before they did share some uh, stories where they started with uh, leading the life of a photographer or videographer mm -hmm. they didn't really get much support from their family and parents especially so in your case did you get full support from your parents? <laughs> um, initially I didn't mm -hmm. but, um, but I think because one thing is I'm a stubborn as a person. Yeah. But one thing about being stubborn is um, a teacher of mine, uh, Kak Marina, also taught me about being stubborn. She's always said that it's okay to be stubborn, mm -hmm. but don't get, don't be rude or disrespectful. It's okay to stand for your dreams. It's okay just, to go for to... your goals. It's okay to be stubborn to protect whatever that you believed in. But don't be rude to people. Don't disrespect them. Don't belittle them. You see. So I, 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 in the first place, I kind of understand when my parents don't even, don't really support what I'm doing because I am the only one in the family who is just like having a weird way of living. <laughs> is it because your entire family, everyone's an engineer or something or No, uh, my families are all, uh, they, uh, some of uh, my sister is in government, my, 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 my brother is in the banking. So mm. they all do, do like, um, professions like profession professions so i'm the one who do freelancing like you know you know freelance freelance life yeah, yeah. right the, it's the very road not well settling <laughs> yeah yeah the road less so, taken uh, basically yeah 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 but i don't mind because i feel like i would love to take the risk mm -hmm. and i love when at one point you don't know what's happening in the future mm. You don't know whether you're gonna get paid. You don't know whether, like, you know, monthly whether you're able to pay the bills That's and all true. of that. It's actually of make you yeah. feel like you wanted to work hard and hard and hard mm -hmm. so that you're able to make amends. Yes. So yes. Um, there's a lot of uh, questions and also a lot of struggles as well. But I love that hardship. I love my journey. You love the challenges. I have basically. stories. I have yeah. stories to tell to my yep. kids. Yeah. One day. Yep. So yeah, of course. Initially, my parents already supported. Um, you know what? Uh, one story I just want to share mm -hmm. because this one is very impactful as well. Um, before I was offered uh to become the Adobe Certified Trainer, okay, I was invited to the uh, Adobe Make It Local event conference yep. where Adobe people, Adobe evangelists came to Malaysia in Kuala Lumpur, two thousand seventeen. Mm -hmm. So I was well. Uh, at that time, uh, after I won the SEA, so they invited me again to that conference as um, people who like you know share my journey on stage with uh, the Adobe evangelist Paul. Yep. Uh, Paul. Paul. What? I forgot his name. Uh, and then Paul. Paul Burnett. Ah, Paul mm -hmm. Burnett. If I'm not mistaken. So, uh, it was just like for five minute session, right? So and I said, uh, I was. But then uh, I just graduated. I was at my house at my home in Kelantan, in my hometown. So I said to my mom, I wanted to go. It was during August. I wanted to go. And my mom said, why you wanted to go? Like, like, what is it for? They don't even like pay you or whatever, things like that. Why you have to go? So I have my own money because after my, um, I, 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 I work as a graphic designer mm -hmm. for a few months. And then I quit. Personal reasons. And then, right. and then, yeah. And then I go freelancing. So I have my own money, right? So, so I just like uh, bought a ticket and I, and I just like fly over to Kuala Lumpur. But one thing, the night when I was like driving to the airport with my mom and he was, she was asking and questioning like why I wanted to go because what is it for me? Like, and I said, because I don't know what, what what's going to happen, but I feel like going. I feel like the idea of this is the first time um, where you have to show up. And this is the first time also I learned the power of showing up technically. Yeah. So you will never know the opportunity, things that's kind of going to get at you if you show up or if, if you didn't show up. Yep. So that's how I learned that always show up, no matter what happens, if you able, always show up. So uh, during that time, Mama was questioning that, but I said, I just want to go and then I go. And during that time, uh, when I was sharing my story, people loved the story. They was like so inspired by that. And that's how I was discovered by mm. the Adobe Master Trainer right. uh, from Adobe Authorized Training Center. And he and then he came to me and said, would you like, would you be interested to teach? Mm. That was how I got offered. And that's then, of course, I went to training. I went for training and I, I got my certifications properly and all. And that's how I started to train day by day. That's how my 
it, it became a, a career. It became a career. Mm, yeah, wow. you'll never know, right? If I didn't show up that day, I don't think it's gonna happen. I don't think I'm gonna be here doing this stuff. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think I'll yeah. be interviewing you either. <laughs> yeah, kidding. I don't think I'm gonna meet you. <laughs> yeah, so 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 it's, it's all it's all like like destiny. You know, sometimes you just feel that pull, that, that the law of attraction pulling you towards something. Um, you're not aware of it. You're not sure what it is, but uh, the feeling is there. The gut feeling is there, and and somehow mm-hmm. you answer the call, and and I'm glad that you did. Uh, but uh, let's say, for example, right now when you you look at look back at things, uh, do you have any regret from pursuing the craft? Regret? Um, for now, no. For now, no. Some people will be asking, like, you took self engineering, don't you think it's such a waste? And you just like toss yeah. it down, toss it out. Mm. And I said, um, the thing is. When I was doing my um, my engineering, software engineering, I was trained to think like a, like a programmer. Mm-hmm. So we know on how to think like, you know, we have if else, we have flow chart, we think behind the software. We yep. were trained to do that as a programmer. Yep. Um, so even though I'm not good in coding, honestly, I'm not good in coding, but we were trained to think like one mm-hmm. uh, as a coder. So when I was learning the Adobe software, I wasn't just like learning in terms of like, oh, you have to understand these steps. You have to press here just because you have to press here. There are reasons why you have to press this button. There are reasons why this button was named as a shipbuilder example. Yep. Things like that. You have the um, the logic behind all of these patterns and also all of these applications. So I was I was trained to think like one because I was in engineering school. Mm-hmm. So when I, I I I have to learn the Adobe software, all of the applications, technical stuff, I use that mindset and the way the fundamental of thinking as a programmer to understand the mechanism, yep. the mechanical stuff. So honestly, it it wasn't a waste for me. It was actually helping me to understand and you know dive into the knowledge of mechanical knowledge or technical knowledge even better. Kind of like a foundation to what you're doing now because uh, you need to know what's going on behind the scenes to understand how, what you have to put in front. Because I always, I always tell people, you know, anything to do with photography or videography is like a magic show. The clients don't really care how you do it, but you have to know the craft inside yeah. out, right? And uh, in the end, the execution is what matters to the client. But ultimately, you need to know the ins and outs because that's how you can actually take advantage of uh, some of the tools that you are provided with. Um, like for example, you 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 know how to use Illustrator to do a design. Um, I would I would not know how I have to today. I still don't know how to use Illustrator. Um, if I were to design that poster that you did for your submission, I would probably go in Photoshop and draw slowly. But you probably found a better way of doing it, and it's a lot more efficient. So this is probably why it's good to have your background in uh, software engineering. Yeah, mm-hmm. and um, the next question is, is a bit uh, what do you call that um, controversial? Uh, how how do you feel being a female? doing what you do in a male dominated industry now we all heard that uh, you know um, in photography and videography you can see all this otai otai all all sifu sifu all, all, senpai, senpai. Senpai. Yeah. all the all the guys are mostly men you know but uh, not often we see uh, ladies you know for example on my twitter i can easily say that from malaysia i only know maybe three uh, female malaysians who, who do uh, videography and photography like yourself uh, the other one is akasha and the, the third one is uh um, Nadira Zakaria so mm-hmm. not they many all, out there yeah. they are all my sequels they are all like really amazing photographers <laughs> and also uh, content mm. creators like, honestly I look up to them yep. so much because they have amazing works mm-hmm. um, that I always look up on so yeah um, technically I think um, we are growing the female um, community in photography videography we are growing okay. I, I able to see a lot of female photographer and also photographer uh, getting into the industry and also tag along, learn photography, all of this. So mm-hmm. I'm kind of happy to see that. And at the same time as well, I also received like a feedback. People say that they wanted to be like inspired to be like one, mm-hmm. like, you know, uh, at one point when people use the word like inspired to be one, like, oh, idola, idola, things like that. It's, to me, it's not a joke. All right. Mm-hmm. Because one point is, when people like inspired by you, you are kind of like holding responsibility um, to to like represent yourself better at one point. Yep. Yep. You see? I agree. All I of agree. that. So uh, when people when I have uh, when I get that kind of comments and also feedback, which is Alhamdulillah, it's good. But um, I have to think of how to make myself better. So I able to bring the spirits and also um the, to make sure to bring so that they know that this journey become a photographer videographer it is not that bad like the way people mm. always think of yep. 
Yep. It's actually a very fun. I know it's 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 unstable or like you will never know what's going on top. But the idea of creating something on your own and get satisfaction from it when it's your own thing, that's that's my major and also my my um, the one that drives me honestly. So um, technically, I did not get any um, bad <coughs> commenting or whatever become a female. Uh, photographer, videographer. Mm. I think people uh, believe in uh, whoever, regardless of gender. But if you're able to deliver the work, you're able to create whatever that they wanted, the clients wanted, then they were just gonna hire you at one point. Yep. And we don't also have any problem with the like different wages or different rate just because you are female, you get mm. lesser. No, we don't have that problem. I think mm, in my case, good. I don't have that problem because I always firm with uh, how much I, I I charge or I rate my my work mm -hmm. because it's always like. Take it or leave it, and honestly, it's not just like oh, take it. If and if you don't, if you don't, if you don't want it, just like leave it. But yep. of course, there are people who provide services. You have to justify what are you giving, yes. what makes you your rate value this much. All of this. Yep. So yeah, and of course, depends on their side, the client side, to think whether it's within their budgets, whether they're able to uh, make you or hire you. So it, it's it's actually a healthy relationship between yes. clients and also the service provider. But people always make it turns bad sometimes because of like the way they handle it wrongly, mm. all of that. So yeah, I think that's something that all of us as a freelancer have to keep in mind also yep. um, train yep. ourselves uh, professionally to deal with people when it comes to payment and stuff. And, and avoid drama and stuff like that especially. Yeah, I don't <laughs> like viral relatingy. Like you can always talk down, right? Mm. Just meet lah uh, face to face and then like settle down what what's happening things like I like that. the attitude that's awesome that's awesome <laughs> okay yeah. so um in, in the case of uh idols because just now you did mention idols i mean just now we did cover but uh you know people who 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 kind of inspire you but uh do you have any heroes in the photography industry um photography industry or videography industry whichever Yes, I remember mm. you got very excited when you when I was hosting Won Wong. <laughs> yes. Oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> Won Wong. Yes, I watched that stream. Mm. Uh, I love um, how I get to know him, not like physically or like you know. But um, there was one time I was I was watching this Adobe stream and I was interviewed where we have V Valentina Valentina's Valentina V. She was the one. She used to work with Von Wong, mm -hmm. and when in during the interview, she mentioned how incredible to work with Von, and also like you know like how she able to step up and also uh, grow from that. Yep. So I check on uh, Von Wong's uh, work, and I love his concept. I think he's very different. He's unique in his own ways. Yep. So I I always like look up to him as well because he's always energetic and also full of ideas. Yes, yes. <laughs> and and he looks like always. I think he he kind of like look always fresh and also young and like you know I love that vibe. I think as a photographer you need to always get excited when you like on the shooting during the scene. Yes, you have to true. always move along, right? So I kind of like wanted to be to be like him to just you know. Have ideas flowing all the mm. time, like you know. I think he's really, really amazing. Yep. Yep. Um, yes. And for female photographer, I look up to Lara Jade. Oh, she Lara Jade. Yeah. She is a uh, fashion photographer. About uh, the fashion photographer, she's mm -hmm. like amazing. She has her own studios and all that. And I love her styles. Yep. I love how she's very humble as well. She always just like focusing on how she does things on her work. Like yeah, I think that's all. Think quite quite videography... interesting. You you just mentioned the uh, two. What? Two brown color ambassadors. <laughs> oh, oops. Yeah, they're both <laughs> part of the program, uh, the Gen X program, from quite some time ago. Uh, that was many years ago, actually. Yeah, but but Lara is really awesome. I, I love her works as well. I think you know it was the best part. I found about these two people through mm -hmm. Digital Refs Cheap Camera Pro Photo Challenge a long time ago with uh with Kai and Locke. Um, you, you should catch those videos. It's I think it's still floating around on YouTube somewhere. It's really hilarious how um. Uh, how they managed to to shoot something really epic with 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 cheap cameras, so that's really awesome. Um, okay, so let's move on to the next segment. Um, you've also been working professionally as a photographer, videographer, and editor for various projects, and your wedding photography and videography works have been featured on TV's Persona Pengantin. Uh, I yeah. hope I pronounced mm. that correctly. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's really true. Okay, so let's take a look at one of your works that actually uh, showcase your capabilities as a wedding videographer. All right, stand by.
Alright, so this is a gentle reminder for you guys who are actually tuning in uh, right now. Uh, one of the ways that you can actually show support for the channel, of course, is through clicking on the follow subscribe button in the top right hand of the photo, that, or rather the screen. <laughs> or you can, in, in fact, if you want to show more support, and this is uh, appreciated, uh, not uh, necessary, but uh, it would be really cool if you do. Uh, you can actually use your, ca your phone to use the camera phone actually, to actually click on that QR code over there, scan it in, and then uh, maybe uh, leave a tip or two through the Razer Tip stream. And uh, make sure you use Razer Gold to um, leave some tips over here as well, because with your Razer Gold, you can actually get Razer Silver, which you can accumulate over time and use it all to redeem epic Razer gear like keyboards, headsets, mice, and even games as well. So that's how cool it is. So I'm just gonna bring back Naj Jiha now in a bit. Stand by. Okay, Naj, that was. Can I call you Naj? Ah, <laughs> so, uh, sure. Okay. It's actually easier you, to you pronounce. You did mention there's Naj, there's Naja, there's Najia, there's quite a bit. But yeah, yeah. technically Naj, Naj well, around, around my 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 professionals um, mm. circle, it's always Naj lah. Awesome, awesome. Mm. And 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 I noticed there's this, there's this very distinctive style when it comes to your cinematography, and I really love it. You love that slow Thank mo. Thank you so that much. Ah, yeah, there was yeah. a there was a face. <laughs> <laughs> there was a face, because I, I noticed that most of your works when I look through your portfolio, you had a lot of this slow mo, and there's there's so much feels. You know, it's like a, hmm. I just want you to be in the moment. Listen, <laughs> feel the wind blowing against your hair. It's so nice and and so uh you know. Thank you, thank yeah, you. Yeah, it, 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 I, I don't know what's the correct word to say. I, I don't want to use the word gentle because that sounds very funny. But uh, <laughs> it flows. It just flows. And I, and I love it. I really love it. And it suits the music and all that. Um, and and this, is, this is actually like a characteristic of someone who actually knows her, her, her editing uh, very well. Because I've seen videos where people edit and, and the music and the screen just doesn't match. You know, everything's like, music's very fast. But then the video's like, slow. Cause it doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. But you, mm -hmm. in your case, I can see that the frames actually... F yeah, Sarah, Sarah, thank you so much. Organic. The word is organic. I was looking for the word organic. <laughs> thank so you, if, Sarah. Yeah, so it feels like uh, it's organic. There's actually a, a flow that follows the beat of the rhythm. And that, that makes it really special. Um, so what would you say is your primary focus when it comes to your business? Do you, do you go into photography and videography or both? Or do you go wedding, corporate, commercial advertising campaign? Because I was looking through your campaigns, um, playlists on, on YouTube. You've done quite a fair bit, like a lot of things. So which one is your Thank primary you so focus? Um, technically, I started with editing. Mm -hmm. All right. I, I love edit stuff. Yep. Um, so that's why I, I, I always call myself as an editor. Uh -huh. uh, and then from there, from, from editing, once you know how you wanted to edit your stuff, and like you mentioned before, I, I like to, to complement the music with the right frame, impressions, emotions, mm -hmm. all of that. I think it has to come together to make it more impactful. Yeah. So I always try to apply that practice in whenever I do edits in my videos. So when you have, like example, you have this idea of how you wanted to have a story, right? Yeah. Uh, in videography and editing. So at one point, when you only know on how to edit, don't know on how to shoot, it becomes a problem. Yes, for me. that's true. That's so true. that's how I started to learn taking, for, taking video as well. It's right. actually for my own purpose, so that when I do edits, I know how my edits gonna be because oh, I shot, I shoot, uh, I shot this shot, I mm -hmm. get this shot. I know the events, how it flows. I know the emotions. I know this character, like this, the subject inside, how 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 she feels, her personality, things like that. Yeah. And and when you know that person, uh, subject inside of your videos, mm -hmm. you understand the emotions and you able to translate well in your editing. True. So I always try to deliver something that feels. I don't like. And uh, I don't like to just like make it. Some people like to have like a very impact, cool transitions, like pop up, very nampak macam cool lah, gempa, <laughs> things like that. And I don't know how, right, to, right. how to say it. Right? But but to me, that's not my focus. I don't mind if you wanna like show your skills on how you able to do uh, complicated editings. Go ahead. That's your genre. Yep. That's your forte. But in my case, I would love for people to to get the feelings that I'm trying to portray. Yes. So yeah. yeah. Uh, example, um, I always have this uh, this playlist inside of my Spotify where, oh, this song suitable for wedding, this mm. song suitable for corporate, this song suitable for very hype event things. So I have all of that list. So the next time I wanted to edit, I have uh, suggestions or recommended songs. But right. one thing is when you like 
finding song from Spotify, it is not licensed. Yeah. So as a people who do things professionally, who deliver things uh, for your clients, you cannot use illegal stuff like, you know, a steal from an artist because you're also an artist or an editor, right? It's very not right to do. Mm-hmm. So that's when I, I, I know oh, I have to work more i have to work harder so that i able to purchase a proper license like you know we have a subscribe uh, epidemic sound we have uh, now i'm uh, subscribed to epidemic audio.com we have zamendo we have artlist all of that so the reason why i i always wanted to try to upgrade my 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 work as, uh, because i wanted to able to properly do things yep. you know like yep. credit the right people things like that so yeah i kind of like focus more on videography more mm-hmm. but i love when um i don't want to just like limit myself in just one thing so i love to try stuff so yep. like i do photography as well because when i do photography i just like oh i love to learn the, the idea of the fundamental photography like you know all of the technical stuff i saw all of that and, and, and. it's kind of similar with videography but of mm-hmm. course we have different things yep. so all of that and I, i i kind of like still wanted to explore more in studio shoots mm play around with lightings i think i have to I, i would love to learn more about lightings because i think it's another next, area that need to be time, explored as yeah, well next time we do a workshop in damansara come and join us at the bronco studio of course i will you, you, you enjoy know. your day there okay so um but the question is um your primary focus when it comes to genre which one do you focus on more these days ad campaigns or weddings um I have I have um constant clients uh weddings mm-hmm. so there are times where I I shoot myself there because certain clients they ask for me to shoot so I will shoot myself there are times where I just like going to send my teams it depends on my availability as All well right. but I always try my best to shoot on my own because I would love to provide the service for my own client mm-hmm. for me myself mm-hmm. you see and also also I love to do campaign as well uh, yep. like um sometimes I do edits for the campaign sometimes I do shoot as well for the campaigns So yeah, I kind of like try to vary very um various kind of my my work because like you will, you will never know that you always learn or pick up different things when you do different projects. Of course. Yeah. So and sometimes I do or uh, I follow people to shoot documentary as well. An example, uh, I did my own um like documentary for uh humanitarian missions where mm. I went to Jordan as well. Yeah. So I learn all of that and it's like very I like to learn things, yeah. you know, at the same time practicing it because when you become an educator, you you cannot just be just teach fundamentally theoretically from the books, but you have to also share your experience how you did your stuff. Exactly. So, so that your your students able to understand and relate more like oh she did something like this, this is how she get the skills and also technique from this and that. So yeah, I I I I don't want just just like focus on teaching all the time i would love to go around and also go outside and create as well so that i able to come back and teach whatever i created inside of my classroom more organic again this is this <laughs> organic this, yeah it's, the keyword today is organic um, i think another term that we had six terms right uh-huh. so now seven we now. have seven <laughs> it's kind of building up to a nice essay now uh furry photos from singapore actually asked uh, do you license direct from the artist or do you use those sites with a collection like audio jungle for example when it comes um, to music i subscribe to the sites like uh we have subscription monthly or yearly is it envato so, or something or do, do hmm? you subscribe to envato or, or something else no uh uh audio.com Audio. the com. one okay. i subscribe yearly. uh actually the one the one uh i do audio.com they offer yearly and hmm. also one li- a lifetime So right. I took the lifetime license right away. How, how much did it cost you? It was like eight hundred ringgit oh, and one hundred and ninety nine USD. That's not so bad. Yeah. Yeah. I, I it was. A, it, to... I think it was a good bargain for mm. lifetime, right? Yeah, it's, it's damn good. I I mm. I'm I myself am subscribed to Envato with Audi Jungle. Because I, I like the music, uh, and I, you know I listen to the trailers and I hear the music and it sounds very familiar. But there comes a point in time where I don't want to have that fam- that kind of familiarity with other people. So I just want to mm. create my own or find my own. And and every time I listen to All Jungle, it 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 it's so nice, you know, different genre and all that. But I guess for Audio Dot Com is about the same. Or but I'll check it out because mm-hmm. it seems like Audio Dot Com seems to be a lot cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but they are still new. I think they just started a few years ago. Right. But of course, Epidemic have has more libraries mm-hmm. because they already dah lama established yeah. well and yep. uh apa uh, apa dia sound also have a sound effect as well library yes, for you yes. but they don't offer lifetime license that's the thing so. so you have to subscribe yeah, yeah they have like only monthly and also yearly yep. 
But, so it depends. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it really depends on what what you want to do and whether you have budget for it. Because right now, mm-hmm. you know, because of the pandemic, I really have to watch what I spend on. <laughs> it's like, True, I think all of us. <laughs> all of us, yeah. And okay, so so next question I want to ask you is something very fun. Uh, what's inside your bag and on your computer? Maybe you can share a little bit about your gear first. Do you have any? Uh... Um, my 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 camera. I have a Sony A six five hundred. I use lens um eighteen and fit eighteen ah uh, eighteen one o four. Uh, I think one of five. Sorry, you have your gear with you now, G Master. Or? Sorry. Do you have your gear with you now, or is it like uh, in a studio somewhere? It's inside my. <laughs> Can I? Yeah, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. You, go ahead, you ahead. want me to go ahead? Yeah, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Let Let's take a look at all your gear. Okay, so while she's sorting that out. Alright, once again, uh, if you guys want to show support for this live stream, uh, you can do so by uh, you know, having uh the heart so to donate to. So this is my to, Sony. Where is the tip stream? Oh, Can sorry. you see? Shut up. Okay, so I forgot to Sorry, put your what? mute. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay, it's all good, it's all good. Uh, that was my bad. I totally forgot to put your mute. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, so welcome this, back. So um, this is my Sony and this is my lens. Mm-hmm. Uh, 18104, 18105, and then... Oh dear, that's a lot of gear. Sigma, Sigma 16mm mm-hmm. for Sony. And I have my Canon, but it was like outside because I was shooting product right, just now. Right. And I was using Sigma 35 104 mm-hmm. art uh, for my product for the shoot. And I have um film camera as well. Oh, really? That part I didn't know. Is this that a contact? Is my oh, it's a mommy. This is a medium <gasps> format. <laughs> you have a Mamiya 645. Oh. oh my gosh. Oh, okay. Next time I got a Malaysia, you got to bring this along. I think I just use like twice. Because I don't really know on how to open this, and plus it's very hard to find a place to. to wait, you know? wait, 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 wait! Did you get this from? Did, did you buy this from a shop in uh KLCC area? Uh no. Uh this one I I got it from someone. Oh okay. Whew. Because I I saw a Mamiya six four five in very pristine condition being sold at KLCC. So I was actually eyeing it when I was in my, in one of my trips previously. But uh, back then I didn't have enough cash on hand, so I couldn't buy it. That looks really good. That, that camera yeah, it's looks... actually quite decent. Memang yeah. cantik. It's still uh, yeah. cosmetically, it's still nice oh, and function hell. well. I am very jealous right now. I am so jealous of <laughs> it right now. Should I show more? Because uh. okay. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna take. Yeah, Hang on, I have dead, more. Man. Wait now. You know, I I dug up my 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 uh store the other day, and uh, I actually found this. And this is Nishika. Oh man, now we are showing off all our old cameras. This is my Nikon FE. Oh, I love that one as wait, well. Wait, it was wait, like wait. a good, a good, a good, a good. That's uh, my Nikon function. FE, and I also have. Who's uh, showing off now, me or oh, you? We, we we both got to show off at the same time. <laughs> yeah, we got. Who's going to be? Who's so being this, interviewed? This you or me? These are my me? two film cameras: Nikon FM2 and FE. Film is not wow. dead. Wow. Yeah, film is not dead. We 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 got to shoot and film when we go Malaysia. I I go Malaysia one day. Let's, Let's go. I I'll think lah. Film out thing. Of course, of course. It'll be fun. Ah. Uh, there was like one piece in the masala where uh, where you can uh chuchi the film in a very cheap price. Oh, oh develop film. <laughs> develop. Sorry, yeah, I was like looking for the word. So, why, why are you washing uh, your film? Uh, that doesn't make so sense. this is actually Nishika <laughs> is a three D camera. Yeah. I, I I got it from eBay. How how much did it cost you? I think this one is like six hundred ringgit or eight hundred. Six hundred. Six hundred. Oh, that's ringgit. a very good price. That's a very good price. Together with the shipping. Um, oh man, this is also... madness. See now now it's all about really gear talk, but but. I have film Yashika. Holy cow! <laughs> <laughs> now I feel very embarrassed. She's got more film cameras than me. I'm. I'm, I'm this so is sad. my favorite. Yeah, which one is that? Rolai. Oh wow! And and your, most of your cameras are in good condition. Yeah, it's in a good condition. Wow. It's, um, I'm amazed. This this even though it's very um, it is not like my some uh, how to say I, I forgot the system. You have to use the zoom focusing. It's range finder, I guess. Ah, uh, it is. Uh, yeah, and then um. It's very sharp. The yeah. lens is very, very sharp. It's a roll I think I have a few. <laughs> I don't know whether I post it on my Instagram as well. I think I have. I have an Instagram where I post all my film. Only on film, film work. Uh, you, you gotta send me the link uh, so I can I can share it with everyone else. Because I, I didn't know that you have a film only <laughs> Instagram account. Uh, maybe you can share with us later so I can uh, put it in the chat link so everyone can see. I think it's really awesome. Okay. Yay! Film is not dead. Hashtag, <laughs> hashtag film is not dead. <laughs> Okay, but quick question. And, and so, it's, it's... yeah, I have... Wait, this is left. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I gotta okay. move. You so, I what? have actually another one which is contacts. Uh-huh. But, 
um Holy I lend it to my friends mm, mm, mm. because you know like at one point um it's very exciting to to share with, with people so that they're able to learn photography themselves yes, so I said no why not you just like go ahead so she was like she is actually in Jordan right now mm-hmm. so she she's going to like Jordan have a lot of um pretty places yep, deserts yep. all of that and yep. she loves to travel a lot so I said took my camera and play with it i gave oh, her like awesome. five to six roll of films wow. when i went to jordan last time mm-hmm. so i said yeah go ahead and then just bring me the film so that i can develop for you and we're gonna see the pictures later and, and so because of the mco she unable to get back, back in yeah. Malaysia yet you know yeah. so um and, and, and which see. film is her favorite which film stock is her favorite um porta porta yay i have i have a porta, porta over there porta, i haven't taken it out yet porta 160. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Same I team. I have P- Portra 800. I think I have few more rolls inside of my ra- uh, inside mm. of my fridge that I, I didn't use. I think it's o- almost expired already. <laughs> oh, I, actually, I'm. You know, the funny thing is, I'm actually leaving my film to expire because I want to try experimenting with with expired film because it can be quite yeah. interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I love like this one. And and another one I love also is Agfa. Oh Agfa, yes. The, but it's also already discontinued. But I love the colors. But isn't it one too... time I shot use I I shot in Jordan. Mm-hmm. It was it gave me a really nice color. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, so I, I just want to ask a very very important question right now. Why not a dry cabinet? <laughs> you hold your gear inside a wooden cabinet. How, how do you keep your ca- uh, camera fungus free and safe? Um, I have what we call the... Silica gel? The hi- uh, silica ah, gels okay, and okay. also the hippo thingy. I forgot, what is it? Uh, hung- um, the humidifier. The humidifier. <laughs> some, uh, things like that. So I just, yeah. Hippo thing. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, thought what is it? Okay. Okay. So, quick question. You are you say that uh, you're using Sony gear and all that, uh, but mm-hmm. you're using Sigma lenses. So why why Sigma lenses? Out of curiosity. Well, for Sony, I use six, sixteen mm Sigma. Um, I love how it doesn't give me bad focus, fast mm. focus. I use a lot for my vlog because right. six, sixteen mm is very wide, right? So you yeah. can just like extend your hand like that, and then mm. you can put your own mic. And when you vlog. The raw mic is still able to pick up the voice nicely. Yeah. So and also, of course, you don't have to think about the focusing, larry with your face and all because it's really sharp and fast yeah, focus. Yeah, I love it so much. Mm. And I think most of my recent video for wedding also like for established shot for cinematography kind of shot, I use that Sigma sixteen mm lens. Good. Good. Because it's one point four. Yeah, <laughs> I, I actually use it for my main cam. Uh, this is actually uh, the sixteen fifty PZ from the A sixty four hundred kit lens, but. The Sigma 16mm 1.4, oh man, the bokeh is just so beautiful. It's perfect for portraiture. Yeah, it, it's so perfect that I decided to get another one. <laughs> but that one's more for stills. Yeah, so so that's that. Mm. Um, okay, so I also heard that, uh, you know, even though you're an Adobe certified uh, expert, um, mm-hmm. you've been experimenting. I've been following you on Instagram. Not as a stalker, but I'm just curious and interested in your work. It's okay, it's public, <laughs> it's not private. Exactly, so don't exactly. Worry. <laughs> right? So, um, I noticed that you've been experimenting with Capture One, which is uh, one of our software that, mm. that supports this live stream channel. Um, mm. Can you share with us why switching over to Capture One? I find it, um, I, I when I was like learning about the studio shooting, mm-hmm. when uh, I saw people shoot uh, for magazines and yep. also for any commercials work, they don't use, they, they use capture one uh during during their uh their tethering you know yeah. and then it, it, it wasn't uh like room or any adobe software it was capture one mm. so i was kind of like very uh interested to know to get to know what is capture one what is it for what is it does why why big studios use this software instead right. of like room all of that so i i did some research i dig in and i found out it has more uh functionalities and also it's very um flexible and it's very i think the it, it technically is like industry standard, but of course at the same time provide for uh, professional photographers. Right. So uh, and also in I I, I tested out. Mm-hmm. I love how you're able to process raw uh, images really really fast. And honestly, when I was importing also exporting, I don't have like I don't have to wait for the program to do that for me. It's really fast when I did the spot. They have mm. layers right now. Mm. I think the new Capture One has layers, right? I think it's been uh, layers since a uh, long time ago, actually. <laughs> oh, really? Sorry, yeah. I just discovered that one. So I, don't <laughs> know. I, thought, I thought it was like just just recently. Mm-hmm. And I love how it kind of like has a bit of Photoshop functionality inside. Yep. So it's very fast. You don't have to switch between programs to do to do things, right? Mm-hmm. So so I, I think I love I love how it, it really fast 
uh, program. Could, could you share a little bit about uh, some something you've been working on uh, on Capture One right now? I think uh, um, previously you were sh- you were saying that you were doing something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, let me share you a screen. Yeah. And you got friends here. I think Ikpora just says hi, Aa. And uh, Nisa O O One asks a question: Content versus creative software, hardware. Which one more important? And this this is something that I'll be asking later also. So we'll probably address that in a bit. Uh, hi, so. hi Ikpora. I don't know who, what's your real name. <laughs> <laughs> Ikpora. But hello. Sure yeah, but hi. <laughs> okay. Yep. yep. I'm gonna share. Uh, this is uh, my screen. I just this is a product that I just showed uh, this evening mm, uh, okay. for Organica, one of my clients. Uh, technically, oh, yes. this is a product for Diana Daniel. If you are Malaysians, you know Diana Daniel. She's a um, celebrity, hot drop, very beautiful young lady. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I I showed her product. She has this organic uh, product line mm-hmm. uh, that she made on her own, which is very incredible. Yep. So, so this is some of the shot that I did, and I tried to play around with the uh, what we call the capture one inside here, mm. and you can see it has kind of like very. Uh, some people, uh, I used to ask people like, did you try to use capture one? Like, um, have you tried to use that? And some people said, yeah, I tried, but they say it's quite um, it's it's very unfamiliar what space is in, mm, and mm. it seems complicated. And I said, really. But when I try and I open, honestly, without looking or without watching any tutorials, I can able to understand how it works already. But oh. of course, I have to dig more and explore more because we have like more buttons that we can control in editing. <laughs> But it's actually a very like fundamentally, it's it's very easy to to understand. Yes. Because like the buttons is very familiar. We have exposure in Lightroom, Photoshop, also we have that. And this is like technically without me um moving to the curves, I know I know this one is used for spot healing. Yeah. Because we have that in Photoshop, yeah. even though they they just rename it differently. Yeah. But this is a technique clone stamp, uh, all of that. So that, I think it's very fast and easy to use, and you can see how like I love Smooth. these functions the before after. It's really fast. You don't have to wait to see whether your picture is gonna turns before and after. Mm. And uh, of course we have this. But I'm gonna try to use a spot healing to some of my photos. Pretty cool that you're actually working on a version 20, which is the latest version. That contains the healing and cloning tools that have revolutionized the way we work on Capture One. Yeah, this is very amazing, <laughs> and this is like the layers that I see just now. Uh-huh. And example, if I wanted to remove some of the dirt over here, I'm just gonna just take the spot healing tools and just like do it like this, and it will pick up from the. Oh, that's fast. Um, yeah, it's fast and it's just like almost accurate. It doesn't look like a patches. Mm-hmm. It kind of like blend it well. Yeah. And it's gone. So, that that white spot is gone. Could you show the before and after again? Uh, maybe at hundred percent, so we can see clearly what's going on. Oh, uh, wait, huh? Can you see? Yep. This is before we have this, and then this is after. Could could you zoom in a little bit more? Because uh, it might be a bit too small for some people. Oh, yeah. sorry. Yeah, no worries. This is before, and this is after. Ah, so you got rid of that smudge, on the yep. on the wooden thing. And you see how it, the 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 capsule was able to. Picked up the right texture to replace mm. it. Mm. This is lines like we have the black lines over here, right? Yep. So when I click on that, it able to pick up the same black lines from different places. Mm. But when it like top up on top, it doesn't looks like a weird patch. Yeah. So the AI is actually pretty smart. And I think yeah, it, and it's fast. You, you know what? Um, AI yeah, Nudge. Oh, I just call it Nudge lah. Like, <laughs> just stick to Nudge. Okay. Be my guess. How, how about this? Mm-hmm. Because you were, uh, you are a trained instructor. I've seen you instruct and perform, you know, uh, workshops and all that. And mm-hmm. and I think I think if you are keen, if you're willing to, perhaps we can one day work together to run a capture one workshop together in Malaysia. What do you think? Bring it on! I would love awesome. to do that. Awesome! Let's let's do that. Let's do that. I'll personally train you so that you can become another me, basically. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, I'm looking because, forward. Because this is this is so looking awesome forward. that uh you know you 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 actually taken to to capture on quite easily uh and I'm very happy that that you are trying it out on your own, with your own commercial client at the moment. I think this is really cool. Yeah. Awesome. Mm. Awesome. Okay. It's amazing software. Oh, thank I you. I think a lot of people like missing out this. Oh. Because yeah. technically, it's like another level. Um, that professional photographer should use this, mm-hmm. because like, it's fast. One thing I I would like to stress out: it's really really fast. Yeah, and I think uh you know what we'll we'll begin with uh perhaps one day uh I can work out something with you. We'll, let's let's start with a webinar. Yeah, maybe we'll yeah. announce it someday soon, soon before August because I think I think it's very important that we we share this wonderful stuff with the rest of Malaysia. 
Yeah, we yeah. should. Let's, let's it's, do that. It's, it's let's incredible. Do that. Yay, mm -hmm. collaboration time. <laughs> let's make it happen. Let's make it happen. Okay, so uh, you also do training for Premiere Pro on Behance and uh, we saw you do some tutorials and workshops and things like that. So I guess, you know, you're the perfect fit for, for running workshops and tutorials on Capture One as well. So maybe on Behance, or, or not, not Behance, maybe some other, uh, because Behance is more Adobe-centric. Uh, perhaps, uh, do you think uh, you do some content creation for Capture One on YouTube, maybe? Anytime soon? Cause yeah, you know, uh, I technically, hmm. I have this one channel called Sharing Basic. Uh, Sharing it's Basic, actually yeah. another educational program or website I created. Uh, I just rebrand the website, so it's hmm. actually under development, but I have the Twitter for it, where I, I and also Instagram, mm -hmm. where I post uh, my short tutorials uh, uh, on Adobe. So I think for the Capture One as well, I able to share the same platform because Good. technically I'm not, it's not like a Adobe centric kind of platform. It's actually yeah. for anything mm -hmm. like, things I wanted to share for people to learn. Good. So uh, I think we can do like a live show or live webinar, live tutorials. We can use Periscope. We can, I can project it to my Twitter at the same time to my YouTube channel as well. Oh man, so there will be like a live streaming through Periscope of is people. a nightmare, man. <laughs> Sorry? Have you done a live streaming through Periscope? I did once. <sighs> okay, with a phone, it's not so bad. With mirrorless, you have to jump through some hoops uh, with Streamlabs and OBS. It can be a bit difficult. Yeah, oh, I, I, I tried it. It wasn't fun, <laughs> but it works. I didn't use my. I, I didn't use my camera. I just used my webcam. The yeah, webcam camera. is fine. Webcam is fine. But uh, for mirrorless, mm -hmm. wow, wow, tough, tough. But let, let's see how it goes. Maybe we'll take this offline. We'll see what else we can have in store, and then maybe when the time is ready, we will announce to the masses in Malaysia. Hey, hey, uh, we're gonna have uh, Najiha and Mezame doing an epic collaboration for Capture One, coming yeah. soon. Yeah, let's let's do that. That would be amazing. Yeah, and uh, okay. So in terms of gear purchase, the next gear purchase, what do you have in in mind? Lighting, lenses, camera bodies, more film cameras. <laughs> I think I have enough films. Let me let's <laughs> use my films. Uh, I I really look forward on the new Sony release, Sony A seven S three. Oh wow! Yes, yes. It That's has been five years. People has been waiting for it. Like yeah, oh my god! Years. Please, 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 yeah. <laughs> Uh, but at the same time, I would love to try uh, the new Sigma camera, FP, right? Sigma yeah, FP. Yeah, Sigma FP. It's really compact, it's really mm. cute, and I, I would, and then it has like you're able to pro, uh, process um, ProRes, yeah, raw, uh, files. So I think it's, it's quite amazing, mm. and uh, yeah, that that's the thing that I really looking forward to try out. I think, something I think, that I really wanted to see. Yeah, mm. as a as a videographer, I think it'll be something that's useful for you because uh, mm -hmm. the, the the camera is being marketed as a cinematographer's dream it's modular mm -hmm. you can you can apply to a lot of other extensions and accessories and i've seen it in kl uh, during the, the, the launch uh, of the sigma fp and i think it, it, it just looks fantastic uh, but you know uh the, the price is so fantastic uh. <laughs> <laughs> i was contemplating getting it to be honest but i saw the price in singapore like mm, okay maybe next time <laughs> but i believe the the feature is also it's, it's, it's really it's good complement with the price yeah yeah, yeah. The, the the new firmware that just came out apparently allows you to do cinemagraphy on wow. the camera itself so that's mind-blowing stuff right there so uh technology cool. right yeah so mm -hmm. you also um what, what do you hope to shoot someday in terms of clientele because right now you're, you're working closely with organica uh with celebrities such as uh sorry i, I didn't catch your name just now uh, diana daniels diana daniels yep um so what kind of clientele do you hope to, to, to work with or who do you want to work with someday? I I would love to work uh, do any collaborations with um with more female photographer I think because and also videographers um mm. like Nadia Zakaria, Asasia Diana. Um actually as uh, Asasia, I don't know how to pronounce her name right. <laughs> but I, I, I mean uh, Acacia. I mean, I mean, Akasha, I, I'm really sorry also if I got it wrong. <laughs> Uh, but yeah. uh, she came to my uh, editing classes last year, ah. actually, from Pro Pro Premium Pro, mm -hmm. and and I met her again, uh, because um, I shot for for her sister's wedding. Oh, okay. Yeah, that, and then that's how I, I met her again. But I don't know whether she remember me or not. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it will be interesting to work with her. But I, but she's more like 
um, landscape photographer kind of things mm. like and, and also she did a uh, humanitarian mission as well yeah for uh Cinta Sierra Malaysia so I, I I've seen her work yep. her photograph her photos it was like very amazing so yeah. I think there's something that yeah. it's, I can relate because I also do the humanitarian mission yes um, taking photos and documentary as well and and speaking of humanitarian projects I understand you've also worked closely with the charisma humanitarian outreach mission or home uh, so mm-hmm. let's take a look at one video you've done where you went to Jordan on a mission to aid the Syrian refugees. Okay, so stand by. Yeah. <laughs> فهدأ يا قلب ورفقة صلي على محمد السلام عليك يا يا رسول الله. كل شيء بيجي من الله هو الملح. بيجي كأس من دبل الله تو مانيس. yes betul. مانيس. dan selamat pagi nama saya Ahmad Fadli bin Ismail dan saya salah seorang daripada delegasi Malaysia yang menyertai KOM KHOM yang mana membawa maksud Charisma Humanitarian Outreach Mission dan ini adalah misi jumlah kalinya yang dijalankan di Jordan which is international mission dan KOM ini adalah satu misi yang dianjurkan oleh Pusat Tuition Academy Karisma yang mana bertapak di Kota Baru Kelantan dan uh, tujuan misi apa tujuan utama misi ini adalah untuk uh, create awareness uh, to the Malaysian people basically uh, kita nak ciptakan kesedaran kepada semua yang mana untuk jalankan satu misi yang besar seperti ini uh, we don't we don't have to be somebody yang kaya ke we don't have to be somebody yang ada pangkat yang tinggi we don't have we don't have to be something like that we 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 are normal people kita hanya kerja biasa and i myself uh, i am a is a student dan uh, ramai delegasi yang kali, uh, kali ini adalah daripada student ku game ta akbar game jaya ku mana akbar dan para yang anti game akan musaada jasa ku mabak makanan saja tapi as you know Pusat Tisha Academic Parismo Exploring Education to Succeed has initiated this program which is this mission the Charisma Humanitarian Outreach Mission KHOM in short COM and we are trying to give the light of hope back to the Syrian refugees lives Mantap. 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 Mantap tu belah. Wai. Mantap. Wai. Mantap. Mantap lagi. Okey. Lepas lepas. Lepas kecil. Semua. 
على محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم يا نبي سلام عليك يا رسول سلام عليك Wow, that was really something. Uh, Thank you. Speechless, really, because uh, you you've gone to to great lengths to to really uh, capture the plight of the Syrian refugees and actually compile them into one very significant and very emotional, but yet meaningful video that uh, really describes their life there. And and you know it's it's quite funny because when I look at the video and I look at what's shown in the news, uh, I can see that there's a lot of uh, chaos in that region. Uh, it's war torn, uh, a lot of battles here and then, and there's so much bloodshed, and, and it's all meaningless violence. But here we see a glimpse, a slice of life within that particular area, and 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 you know, it's not too diff, not not too different from you and I. We just people going to school, living their lives, you know, spending time with communities, and and, and I, I don't know, yeah, it's it's just different from watching what is on the news you know this is this is a, 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 a important documentary i feel that, that what you've done and Thank um you so much. yeah mm. uh, but how, how do you get into working with com um technically uh remember when i mentioned that uh, kamarina one of my teachers just now mm -hmm. in the first um segment um she was the one who founded um, the COM, Charisma right. Humanitarian Mission. So Charisma is actually a um, tuition center in Klantan mm -hmm. that I went during my SPM to learn English. So Kamarina is my English teacher. Right. Uh, and and up, up until now, also she's still my mentor and also my teacher as well. So uh, she, um, during 2017, um, that was uh, the first mission that we did in Jordan. Yep. We went to Jordan and helped the Syrian refugees and we have been doing it every single year except for this year because of the COVID. Yep. But the last time we went was during December last year. We went for the winter mission. Wow. Yeah. So technically we went uh, for winter, we went for Raya mission and we went also for uh, summer or a summer mission as well. Mm. So yeah, um, so how I got involved was of course because uh, she's one of the my teachers and she knows I uh, I do videos that back then and there's a funny story behind when she was offering me mm -hmm. uh, to join her it was okay during that time I was on my holiday in Klantan so when I, I was like driving that day and I saw a banner mm -hmm. uh, at the side of the road the, yep. this banner say it was like uh help this uh, from i think uh Chinta syria, syria banner where they were asking for donation for winter in right. syria so that was one and, and then um my instinct was saying that i wish uh and i was like i question myself like when i able to do something like this when i saw the banner and i think two days later uh Kamarina, she called me up and then she said hey you are in Clanton, right so why not come and just visit her and see her mm. uh, she has something to, to to talk about so i was like okay no worries so, so i just like went and see her and that's when she she mentioned about her intentions to uh founder to found it uh the ngo mm. Mm. so she said uh she has this uh amount of funding that um she able to uh, get and also she wanted to do more which is go internationally and save and also help the Syrian. So she said, well, would you love to become my videographer and also document the, document all of that? Mm. So I said, and I said to her, I just, I just, it crossed my mind like two days ago and got like answering the questions right now during that moment. So it was kind of like, um, it's meant to be, I guess. 
uh, again another example of how the law of attraction is start, starting to pull you into some kind of the a, right place, the right time. Yeah, right place, right time. Like what for people right said earlier. Right, right intentions, all of that. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's great. That's great. And uh, for these kind of trips, um, what gear do you bring for for shooting um, the, the the documentary? During this video, it was my our first mission. So by that that time, I didn't have my Sony camera yet. I was just using my Canon sixty, mm -hmm. and of course, uh, I bring my seventy two hundreds. And also, I have another videographer with me, mm -hmm. uh, Farid, who yeah, helped Farid. me a lot, my assistant. So technically, we that was that, that also the first time I work with him, and it was like the first time we work, we already during international mission. It yeah. wasn't just like you know, like okay, there's no impromptu, there's no interaction, just like boom, let's do the big mission together, all of that. So Amazing. we have like a good start, uh, uh, working as a team, and and also he also um, quite new during that time in videography. So I kind of like help him a lot also guide right. him on how things that I wanted, like what kind of footages, how to shoot, things like that, all of that. Mm -hmm. So and in the end, he becomes my my partner. Oh. Uh, and then, not, not partner personally, I mean partner as in, as in <laughs> <Okay>. working. <laughs> working. Got it, Don't got it, got it. Wrong. Don't worry. Don't worry. <laughs> okay. Did you like cow okay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm not trying. All right. All right. Okay. So, so uh, after that, we have been working um, for the missions together since then. Mm -hmm. I think three missions already. Three wow. to two missions together with him. So, really? yeah. We, we are a good, a good, a good, uh, a good team now. To right. work Excellent. With. Excellent. And and uh, what kind of challenges do you face during this entire trip? I mean, like because it's 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 Syria, right? Um, or mm. or right, it's Jordan. Uh, that, Jordan. That area has got a, a lot of uh, uh, friction in in terms of mm -hmm. politics. Um, do you face any or encounter any form of uh, difficult situations that you know that could have put your life at risk? Um, we we didn't enter the border, the mm. Syria border, because it's very dangerous and it's not allowed. Yeah. Uh, and of course, uh, when we went to the Jordan, we went, uh, we visit the embassy. We make sure that we have a proper recognition, and also uh, the embassy allows us to to make the visit. Yeah. So because certain NGO, I, I'm not sure what kind of NGO, but I think we heard that there are certain NGO also when. I, I understand they are trying to give aids and also deliver helps, but uh, maybe they didn't do a proper courtesy visit to embassy oh. uh, to sh to say that oh we are here to to to, to stand aids, you know. Mm. So we kind of are trying to make sure that we give a good impressions as a, as a new NGO. So yeah. we have a courtesy visit to embassy every time we went to the Jordan to make sure that they aware that we are here. We are Malaysians and we are here. We are doing this, all of that, and also um. So technically, the the closest we went. To the camp was like one kilometer away from mm. the Syria uh, border. One, one kilometer never... is still quite close, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of yeah. close, but uh, Alhamdulillah, we didn't have any like any bombing or whatever. Mm. We don't hear all of that. Um, so technically, it was just um, it was okay. It was safe, um, huh? but, but 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 of course they have like um, roadblocks, you know, the Road checks military. Yeah, but, but so we have to you, be careful. Yeah, but do you at any point in time feel fear, uh, of being afraid? You know, you're you're in in those territories uh, any sense of fear in you or was it just you know because you're a professional let's just do the work cast out all forms of doubt um i have no fear um mm. but i have worry in terms of because when you went to the camps you have no idea how it's gonna be like yeah and we went to like like 40 camps all of that 40 camps all um, have like different families different stories so and also we will never know whether they have like we have also a case where the kids also the child has a malnut malnutrition a mm. lot of like health problems yeah so when i was like um shootings i was kind of like worried in terms of if uh, what if i unable to catch a proper story for right. that because it's just like one time mm. visit you talk, but you cannot like re-record or like redo you exactly. know it's not exactly. a commercial shoot. it's not a, like yeah. a planned shoot and you wouldn't do justice so what, to the subject either if you tell yeah, the whole story and then you cannot instruct them like hey can you please cry <laughs> like hey can you please uh, show the fact, sad face no mm. I, everything is like very genuine so so as a people who the one responsible to capture that and has the knowledge to do that I kind of like worry if I unable to deliver it properly. That was my concern. Um, but yeah, I hope I hope I I think I, I tried we tried we tried our best to actually capture as much as we could and also mm. try to share it with the world to see 
to show that what has been happening and then how people has been dealing with the war as a refugees and all yeah. of that. And and I suppose during uh, working with all these NGOs, uh, it's all based on public donations, and most of this effort is come, including ticket flights and all that, are coming out from your own mm-hmm. pockets or charity. Uh, we have like our our own like in charity. We have when 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 we ask for the fund for fundings, mm. we 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 stated like oh this is like for Syrian. Mm-hmm. And also, we have another funding uh, where we said that this will be for management and also right. for the, um, like, the fees, all of that for for eat, uh, then all of that lah. So basically, your, your expenses are still covered lah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay, that's good because I think one of the one of those uh, uh, things that a lot of people wonder, even for myself, I always wonder like mm-hmm. you know when people go for voluntary missions and all that, uh, do they take it out from their own pockets or do they have like governmental support or any form of other funding through charity or something for example but yeah at least at least you share so now I have a clear idea of how, mm-hmm. how it works and the fact that you actually um, had an assistant to, to, to work with and you're so nice enough to actually teach him you know <laughs> how to go about with uh, with shooting and I think that's great um, but you also have done other collaborations with photographers like for example you, I saw that you did one with Saiful Chin um, yeah. doing B-roll such as uh, one for Asha Fauzi. Asha Fauzi. Asha mm-hmm. Fauzi. Okay, so let's let's take a look at that one. All right, so stand by. Just forgot to unmute you. Okay, so that that was a very interesting take on a, a photo shoot. Uh, you're actually doing more of like a B-roll and having your own sort of like music video in the background uh, <laughs> while the photographer yeah. shooting. But just curious, how often do you collaborate with other photographers and videographers? Um, for this case, it was just like a fun shoot. Mm-hmm. We we just like I I I Chin also I call it Chin. Uh, I okay. call him Chin. Chin also um joined me for during our latest mission to Jordan. Oh okay. So. Me and Farid was the one who do the videos, and we had Chin who do the photo for photography for us. Nice. So recently, yeah, uh, and then because before that, this this is the project, personal project, like fun project we did together before uh, he joined the Jordan mission. Mm-hmm. So technically, it was just like a fun. We just like test. We we went out testing out um um lenses. You yeah. know, like we did some like review things like that. Just like play around. Just like to show like what 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 the lens able to do this and that. So collaborations technically, uh, it depends. Um, if we have free times and we say, hey, let's go, let's mm. go hang out, let's go for a fun show, we just like go. Mm. Mm. So uh, it depends on our both availability and la. yeah, and also mm. like you know, is there anything fun to do? Like or any challenge that we are able to create according to trends or whatsoever, right. all of that. And and uh, speaking of a uh, challenge, uh, when it comes to doing work for for clients to do mm-hmm. advertising campaigns, is it mm-hmm. very challenging also? Yeah, it is. Um, <laughs> but of course, you have to make sure you meet their requirements and also mm. whatever they have in mind. Um, and what else? I think and a lot of amendments, a mm-hmm. <laughs> lot of drafts. <laughs> Clients will be like, eh, I want this changed, I want that changed. 
yeah, all of that, you know, like, um, yeah. I think, but but I think it's just like normal way. Like mm. this, that's how you work, right, with people mm. technically. And and how do you actually, you know, first of all, uh, this is a two part question. Like, how do you mm-hmm. get in touch with collaborators as well as clients? Do you use social media to market yourself, or do you, do you depend on word of mouth, or do you send emails, you know, cold calling and things like that to to reach out to your clientele? Mm, for clients, um. If I would like, if I would, I I always like have a package that I cook. Like example, or for social media packages, mm-hmm. uh, we have like photography package or content creator package or like you know social social media uh, managing packages, all of that. So there are there are times where I just like email them or DM them and then they offer what what I have in my hands. And there are people. There are sometimes also people just like reaching out through my social media because that's how I put all of my works even though it's everywhere sometimes on my youtube sometimes on my another account sometimes mm. on my personal account so it depends um uh, but for like example for corporate trainings for corporate clients i always email them and just like um you know introduce yourself and see what you have to offer yep yep more mm. formal uh, basically Mm-mm. and and i think it's, it's speaking of social media i think it's very important to separate like what you said just now you have your own personal account as well as your work account it's mm-hmm. very important to keep things separate because you know sometimes clients can see what you, they you, mm-hmm. your your Twitter account is, for example say <laughs> may not be savory or that bawang bawang yeah I, I think I think that's that's something that we both agree that it may not be good lah uh, for your own personal branding uh, okay so let's let's take a look at one of your campaign works that you've done for your clients uh, this one is called the Zainal Hotaru campaign okay stand by okay you might listen mommy I did present to you okay da da bicycle without pedals yeah <laughs> it's like a new thing it's like a trend oh really have that i don't have that no no <laughs> pedals no brakes oh that's quite interesting yeah it's like like a like a like a skateboard kind of thing ah. but it's a bicycle so, so for, for kids uh-huh. i guess yeah very, very interesting what kids are riding out these days uh for for their own mobile mobility um, mm-hmm. but uh, let's say for example for this particular shoot uh how, how difficult is it because i, I really want to ask there's a child is it difficult working with children? Um, it is not as difficult because we have the mom over there who's mm. going to instruct and also like mm. help um, put him in control technically. Ah. But of course, um, one thing about exam, uh, it, 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 it applies the same thing like when I was shooting humanitarian mission because it unspect- in a, it's a very unexpected. You will never know how the kid's going to run and also like that you cannot instruct them to smile or give impression. Yeah. The listening that you could just like, okay, can you just like make a piece? Things like that. Uh. So you have <laughs> always to be like camera ready to capture all of the moments mm-hmm. uh, because you'll never know during your, because I also edit the video. So like you'll never know when you need that cut. Yep. yep. So and- I, I was just like going to just keep on rolling without stopping. So, so in that kind of situation, um, just cur- out of curiosity, how many SD cards mm. do you <laughs> burn through? Oh, only one, only one. Only one, so it's um, not so bad. Yeah, I, I love to use um, like a big volume kind of SD cards because mm. I shoot weddings sometimes it's very mm. continuous uh, events, like two yep. events in a day, things like that. Yep. So I have like 64, 124, 128 gigabytes. Mm. But of course, one thing about <laughs> having a very, very big volume or storage uh, SD card is you have to make sure it's very reliable graphic cards uh, graphic card, uh, SD cards SD cards yeah yeah I mean you have to make sure it's a good brand it's a very um, it's, it's gonna be expensive for you, but it's reliable so so far I've been using um, 128 GB for I think it's Sandisk and also Sandisk Re- Rexa uh, wait Lexmark Lexa? Uh, Lexa Lexa Lexa, Lexa? Uh, yeah. 
Yeah, Lexmark so is a printer. it was like one of the uh, reliable brands, mm. and I have no problem so far. I have okay. no like, Alhamdulillah, I have no like corrupted or anything. Very, very so, important yeah. to actually use reliable SD cards because mm-hmm. I think uh, this is your lifeline when it comes to work. Mm-hmm. And I completely True. agree. It's always always good to to get brands that actually are proven. Um, for for this kind of shoot, uh, how big is the crew? Like, is it just yourself, or do you have assistants with you or producer? So um, this actually just a quite a a, a quick shoot. Mm-hmm. I, it was just me. Ah okay, so it's a simple it one. Just, yeah, it's a simple one. Huh? A simple Very one. Quick one. And uh, let's say we look at everything that's been happening so far. Um, what would you say is your most memorable shoot? I would say the humanitarian shoot one. Mm-hmm. I guess that was the most important. I cried. No, no. At one point, when you saw the eyes of the kids of the children mm-hmm. uh, in front of your in front of your face right but you are able to see them like a normal people because you have you have to be there to shoot you have yep. to see their eyes through the lenses yes so when you just like even though your um your your idea in the first place was just like to get the shot mm. but when you see their eyes through your lenses it kind of break your heart but at the, yep. same, at, at the same time you have to keep it together because you are you have to be yeah, professional yeah so yeah. Uh, and also as a woman you know, like we always emotional, like things like that, right? So it's it's kind of tough for me to to put a like a cold face and also cold emotions when I'm shooting yeah. something very touch, um, like that. So yeah, and 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 that like shooting for the humanitarian will be one of my best. Um, I think my best experience so well. I mean, I will never able to get that kind of experience when I was shooting for clients because mm. it's totally different. It teach me a lot of things. That when I went back to Malaysia, I'll I'll just like have a this deep talk and just like talking in questions a lot about life, like you know, like finding the, the right directions or shifting my mind's perspective, all of that. So yeah. I love to do things that teaching me some way. It's great, you know, great. that I can learn from. Mm-hmm. And I, I completely agree with you. I think uh, furthermore, you you go to a place where there's a lot of suffering, and then when you go back to Malaysia, it's like a uh, it, it does put things into perspective um, seeing how you know things that you probably would have taken for granted here in Malaysia mm-hmm. they just can't enjoy it in, 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 in Jordan you know it's, it's, it's different completely different lifestyle um, okay so now the whole world is enveloped in this uh, COVID-19 pandemic so mm-hmm. how, how much has it affected your business as a photographer or a studio owner um i think for for in for my wedding business um i kind of like thank to my clients because um only few my clients cancel mm-hmm. uh, because and then a lot of them just like you know postpone and now we are resuming so i i'm going to shoot them um my clients for next july and also august Great. so i don't i don't really um my wedding business is not that affected at one point so th- that's a good thing and for video shooting also, um, we have ways to overcome all of this. So we have clients send us uh, products so mm-hmm. that we can shoot in our places without having uh, human interactions. Yeah. But but of course, we make sure that everything is sanitized, all of that. Uh, because post uh, is working, right? So uh, the post, post, post stage is okay. Um, what else? I think, uh, and also I love the idea of like, when you are like sitting at home, Mm-hmm. But for someone who cannot just like sit still yeah. <laughs> and watch Korean drama at one oh, point, yeah. I know so, you're into Korean drama. <laughs> I see all your posts. Come on, like yeah. right, uh, and of course when you are like at home, you always find a way to go out without able to going out. Oh, so I the only thing I I, I was like thankful for, of course, a decent internet connection. So I will try my best to. I am the like example. Uh, currently, I am developing my own online courses. Mm. I able to do um learn catch and also get uh, learn new skills um a yep. lot of things and, and this is all under your um what's this called sharing basics i think sharing basics, sharing basics. okay so uh, i just want to share a kind of like a trailer that uh you you <laughs> shared with regards to uh <laughs> sharing Love basics trailers, huh? yeah 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 <laughs> this is, this is uh, i promise this is the last one <laughs> okay yeah because uh, i wanted to show one more actually the one with the rose rice but i think uh, maybe what i can do is i can share the link uh to, mm. to the audience later on because uh, we, yeah. we are mm. running a little short on time um mm-hmm. but but it's, it's 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 really cool to see what you've done here uh that you've actually set something up called sharing basics during this 
crazy period. <laughs> Alright, so let's take a look yeah. at this. Hi, my name is Nazia Hanadla. I am Adobe Certified Expert and also Instructor, also a freelancer, photographer, videographer and also scriptwriter. I specialize in create creative contents for digital platforms like social media accounts, YouTube, weddings, event, corporate and also TV program. Editing is an essential part for telling stories for films, adverts, campaign, and also social media videos. There are many editing programs, but nothing like Adobe Premiere Pro. Premiere Pro works with all of the file types and its simple tools allows you to work from one device anywhere in mobile. In this basic course, we learn about the professional workflows on how to edit a video. We'll create files, import projects and also familiarize ourselves with the program interface and also workspace. Then we will learn sequences on how to use the program monitor and also viewer. We will learn more about the timeline and also how to add titles to your videos. Next, we will work on the keyframes and learn on how to manage the files inside the project. Then, we learn on how to manage masks and also create opacity within the videos. Next topics, we will learn on how to do color corrections and also color grading. After working with colors, we will learn on how to enhance sounds and sound mixing inside Adobe Premiere Pro. We will learn to apply the keyframes in audio, fade in, fade out the music. Lastly, before we end our course, we will learn on how to add presets and also export the videos. For this course, no previous knowledge is necessary, but any experience that related to Adobe program is so helpful. We will start from scratch and we will explore the program together. For the technical requirement, all you need is a computer with an Adobe Premiere Pro license or trial, both will do, and also a media encoder installed. You can enter as a beginner or intermediate level for this course. This course also for working professionals who are seeking to improve knowledge and also improve their workflow in this industry. Don't forget to join and see you. Whoa. I should totally charge you for the advertising spot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. And uh, it, it's really cool that you actually have this course online. Uh, and maybe I'll actually personally check it out because I am exploring vlogging again. Um, I was mm -hmm. using Final Cut Pro for a while and now I'm actually mm -hmm. going over to the dark side, <laughs> trying out Premiere Pro. Um, come, come, come. Yeah, Premiere Pro has changed so class. much. Mm -hmm. No, no, it, it has changed so much. Premiere Pro, it changed so much. Um, because back then, before I went over to FCP, I was actually using Premiere Pro so and I didn't quite like it. I think I was on CS6 back then. Uh, it was quite heavy, slow long and clunky. Long time ago. Yeah, it was a long time ago. That was, <laughs> wow, 2010 I think. Then after that, I, I went over to FCP and the rest, FCP is so much faster. So that day, just a couple of weeks ago, I was doing my own trailer and I tried out Premiere Pro because, yeah, you know what, I have it, I might as well just try it. And I realized that, hey! It's faster now. It's it's a lot lighter. It's it's easier to work with as well. Mm -hmm. um, although it's certain things reliable. are yeah, it's more reliable and uh, it doesn't crash as often. <laughs> <laughs> it has auto save okay right now. Yeah, it's auto you can save set, now. Like, for every one minute or two minutes. A so actually, actually yeah, way. actually that was the reason why I switched over to FCP because FCP actually has got auto save. So the moment you leave your project, it's all saved up for you. Mm -hmm. uh, Premiere Pro, once it crashes, that's it. Your timeline is gone. <laughs> I was like, true. Oh man. Okay, so quick question. Why do you choose to be an instructor? Um wait. Okay. <laughs> Your That's something that huh? Okay. Um I love the idea of sharing things. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna say I love the idea of teaching. Mm -hmm. Um but I love to share stuff. Because yep. one point, um I ha I I hold this idea that knowledge is to be shared regardless yeah. of um, how much the value it doesn't matter because it, it wasn't ours in the first place it mm. was actually from the creator itself yep. so if Allah it is really my our God didn't give or provide us with that sufficient knowledge to understand things you still unable to understand stuff yep. so once I've been given that gift to understand something I, I would say like it will be such ignorant of me if I don't share it with two people all right mm. but of course a certain knowledge has its own values yep. the reason why we you put a price to it is because you wanted to emphasize the value of that knowledge because if everything is free 
no one will appreciate it because oh it's everywhere it's free no one cares <laughs> so that's the reason why you you i have to put a price people have to put yep. a price on that knowledge courses classes all of that it wasn't because of like 100 because of the monetizing the the courses but it, we wanted to have a value so that mm. people understand it's a valuable thing to learn yep. yep so i think that's the idea of of, of me trying to teach and also share yeah and, and uh, you, since you are self-taught, is, is this how you also uh, learn to become an instructor yourself or do you have to attend courses yourself? Um, it, it, it goes um, through experiences. I still remember when the first time I was teaching, I was 24 years old when I had my first classes. Wow. And when I was teaching at the Adobe Ultra Training Center, I didn't teach school kids. I didn't teach um, college kids. I straightforward teaching people from industry, people from agency, all mm. of that. So all of them like really older than me and I'm so young. People will be like questioning like, um, are you the, the instructor going to teach us? Like, uh, don't you like looks like very young to teach us <laughs> all of that? I always have the impressions. Oh dear. But one thing about um, teaching adults is uh, you try to make friends with them. At one point, um, they are your students, but you don't have to like overboard or go rude. You still, you still outside. You still like someone who are, like so much younger. You still have to respect them in a way. Mm -hmm. But you have to put like a, a lines that that. I'm here to teach you something. Yep. It's on you whether you want to take it or not. But I'm trying my best to give something for you to add value to your, to yourself, right? Excellent. So at one point, I tried to make friends with them, and in the end, we just become friends, like kaka, adi adi. <laughs> like they, they even share me stuff, like hey, oh, and how things like that. I love that kind of relationship that I built with my students, mm. because it's it's just not students in teacher. It's beyond that. Yes. And they even follow me on my social Instagram and they keep on like supporting me, like, you know, giving advices. And that's one, that's one lady, I think Chinese lady. She mm. was like very older. I think like she was like 40 something. Mm -hmm. And um, I still remember that was the first time I was teaching that classes with a lot of massive class, like I think 30, 20 people. And then she, uh, after my classes, she came to me and she give advices to me like, Oh, when you like introduce yourself, you don't tell that you are like this and that. You make sure that this and that, like you as we have to establish yourself, even though you are it. So she kind of like provide me with the tips and tricks mm. on how to make myself more presentable in the front. Because wow. at one point I look younger. <laughs> I cannot <laughs> change the way I look because of hello. I mean with the things like that. But but of course, like I try my best to uh, give a good impressions as someone who is knowledgeable to mm. give something for you. That's yeah. it. And, and I just want to take a quick uh, shout out to Eros86 from uh, all the way from America. She just joined in the channel and she says, Oh my gosh, mm. he's alive. He's alive. He's live at 9 a.m. <laughs> in the morning. So hi and thank you for hosting us. Uh, Eros86 is a wonderful photographer and retouching artist from uh, the United States of America. Uh, I can't remember which city you're based in. Uh, is it Georgia or something? I, I, I can't recall. Is it Boston? I, I, I really can't recall. I'm so sorry about that. Uh, but uh, she is uh, known as Emily. Uh, Tennessee. Tennessee. Nashville. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I don't know my states well. I'm so sorry. Um, she is a spectacular work. Maybe I'll... I'll yeah. You know what? Uh, maybe you could just uh, share your work in the chat. And I'll, I'll let uh, Najiha take a look at it as well. Um, we we'll love to. Yeah. And uh, Rose, uh, Najiha is actually... Um, uh, uh, Adobe certified expert based in uh, Malaysia, and uh, she's our guest for tonight. Uh, actually, you, you just join us at the tail end of the live stream, <laughs> <laughs> almost done. But uh, yeah, I think it's, it's great that you've actually joined us because uh, Emily and I actually started a long time ago. We I introduced her to Capture One as well, wow. and uh, she's she is really phenomenal. If you've seen her works, her Instagram is like. <sighs> Mind blowing. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I'm gonna check it out now. Yeah, yeah. So, um, <laughs> I figured that would happen. I was just excited to see you alive when I was awake. Yeah, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, yeah. Her Instagram is uh, Emily McGonigal Photo. So, you can uh, take a look at that as well. Um, right. So, quick question. Just now, uh, Nisa actually asks, um, Nisa 01 asks, content versus creative software, hardware, which one is more important and why? And I also want to ask a similar question along that line. Um, how how uh important is it to to you know between skills and gear which one is more important or are they both as equally important mm, i of course you need gears to uh, to move like gears will be the your vehicle to do things 
but having a gear without the proper knowledge or like not knowing on how to operate would be such a waste as well yep. i would say both are important but when it comes to priorities i always think that having more knowledge is my priority and then gears mm. i will always try to utilize whatever i have regardless of whether it's old gear or whatever but if that's the only thing that i able to have or to get now mm-hmm. uh, but that, that's the thing that when some like you you don't have right like it's within your budget you don't have the money to upgrade your your gears but when it comes to knowledge you have the ability to upgrade your knowledge because that's true. it's internet it's everywhere you can always finding ways to upgrade yourself in terms of skills like knowledge skills all of that all you have to do is just like read a lot and also practice yourself whatever yep. you have and, and then when the time is right um you will you will get the chances to upgrade your gears and apply whatever you just learned And I, and I like the it. fact that you you actually have got the same idea as me when it comes to attaining gear because at the end of the gear is just a tool, uh, but mm-hmm. both must come in hand in hand together. You need to learn how to use the tools to effectively use them to execute your vision. Uh, sure. What I have actually written a long time ago, um, which I need to update by the way, this was actually written about two years ago. Uh, it's a mark? gear purchase guide for the three months rule. So I have this uh, blog post which I've put up mm. uh, in the chat box. So if you guys want to take a look at it, you can go ahead. Um, but basically, it just describes how important it is to keep your skills up and at the same time, you know, watch your spending because gear costs money. Um, tools help you realize your vision, but uh, sometimes, you know, if you overspend and then you know you you can't make back the money, you're gonna die. It's it's not mm. gonna be easy. One right? thing about buying gear is, to me, is 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 it always like an investment. If I yes. invest this much. I have to gain double or triple of what I I invested. Fantastic. In. We are same. We 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 are definitely aligned mm. when it comes to that. And um, people have also asked me when it comes to gear. Should I just buy a cheap item or should I just save up, rent, and then buy the more expensive but reliable brand, mm-hmm. for example? Now I would I would say go for the latter because if you can Mm-mm. afford it, save the money first, rent. Mm-mm. You don't have to buy cheap stuff and then you know. When cheap Repurchase. stuff break down, mm. yeah, because you have to repurchase and repurchase, and when things break down, it can be really bad. Um, yeah, true. So, so this is again up to your own budget, and, and there's no hard and fast rule. But uh, this is my personal take on it as a professional, lah. Um, okay, so next question I want to ask is this, <laughs> because I noticed something in your trailer for the Premier Pro one, and this is so cheeky of me yeah. to ask you ask. Um, you actually mentioned that uh, in order to attend your premier pro basic class or course um mm-hmm. you need to have uh, you need to fulfill a technical requirement for participation namely having to use either a trial or a licensed copy of premier pro now what do you think mm-hmm. of people who use pirated software to earn money for their business mm. <laughs> <laughs> i love these questions yeah um so i'll admit i used to use the crack and also part of the software during mm. my university days I, I think everyone did like, <laughs> don't yeah, worry we all did we the all one did. who start up always gonna use that because we don't have enough money right to yeah. purchase and all of that um, but honestly I learned a lot when I started to to do things properly legally technically you are an artist all of us are an artist an artist is not just the one who can sing and also dance the one who creates something like create creative stuff we consider ourselves an artist yep. so I don't think it's supposed it's right for us to steal from another artist. The one okay. who developed the software also an artist. Like a lot of team has been working so hard to create something to ease your work. Yeah. Right? So that you yeah. can create better stuff, you can create amazing stuff so that you can show that to the world, you can get more payment for it. you can get better and bigger clients for that. Yes. So why would you jeopardize someone who kind of like helping you to provide you that kind of tools to improve yourself? Yeah. So well then again, I th- yeah, I think I think that that's how I I try to reflect myself. And of course, um, as a Muslim and also in Islam, we, we always have the berkat, you know, mm. like um, the money that we earn, if we earn it properly in the right way, inshallah, it's going to double, and we will get more and more and more. You mean right? rewards? Uh, rewards, yeah, rewards. Yeah, rewards. yeah. yeah I think I, I believe in that. So I think since I've been using uh in the right way, uh, like uh proper. Programs, also proper products, like licensings, all of that. Um, so far, that's it, it. It doesn't make me even broke, broke to use that. So technically, like I said, it's an, it's an investment. Yeah. So you invest something in the right intentions to do the right work. Inshallah, you will gain more and more. That's great. That's great to hear. 
And I think uh, Emily has actually shared uh, she used to rent her 7200 all the time because she couldn't afford to buy it at first and then uh, didn't know how to work it, work with it. Uh, so mm-hmm. it was just our renter and trying it out. Um, but by the time she rented out at the 10th time, that's when she decided to buy it. Um, yeah, that actually makes sense because uh, after a while you realize that you know the rental cost is gonna out 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 uh, it's gonna cost more than buying it. Buying know, so it, investment, uh, like what you say, it's just an investment and it makes sense. Uh, she also said it broke her brain <laughs> when she found out that <laughs> people are using pirated software for the business. She never understood that. Yeah, actually, to be honest, um, for me because I'm stuffed with Capture One, I work for Capture One. Um, it feels really ridiculous when I run workshops and people actually ask me in my face. Do you same, have crack same. Right I got that question a lot in my, in my yeah, students. It's quite well. shameless of them, but I completely understand and empathize because some people cannot afford the software and all that. So that's why we always say that, you know, there's still subscription-based offer and sometimes there's promotional offers and maybe you can just keep a lookout for that. And uh, for example, Capture One, we do have a perpetual license. So if you guys want to buy the license once and for all, it's, it's going to be a lifetime thing. It's, it's an investment. You can make mm-hmm. back the money easily. I mean, it's costing by default on CaptureOne.com is about 299 USD. Of course, if you buy from Malaysia partners, it's going to be a lot cheaper. Um, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm going to just put it out here because Sigma Malaysia and myself, we're actually going to start something. Uh, and most likely, Natch, you're going to be part of it. I would love to have you on board. Yeah, because you use Sigma <laughs> and all that. Um, yeah, this is an open invitation. I just want to have you come on board to share a little bit about Capture One. And I think it'll be quite cool if I were to offer a promo price during that period of time. And, and I think uh, one of the things that I love to do is, of course, encourage photographers to, to use the proper software. And, and believe me, there is a sense of satisfaction when you actually have a software that you can call your own. Rather than you know getting a pirated copy and risking your computer losing data to viruses and malware and things like that. And, and don't tell me Mac don't have, there's still issues, yeah? Um, true, true. I, I've been on both sides of the fences. I've used pirated software before. I mean, young, back then, naive, not <laughs> sure what to do, no money, right? But <laughs> over time, I realized the importance of investing in original software because like what you said, Naj, I really love what you said. It's all about uh, supporting another artist. Okay, in, in the case of any software, it doesn't matter if it's Adobe or Microsoft or, or even uh, Capture One or anything at all. Anytime you, you buy the original copy, you're actually supporting the developer's research and development. And so, if you don't, you're leaving, giving the money away to some shoppy pirated guy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> man, I saw so personal suddenly. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's, uh, you're not doing cool. any favor to the, 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 the business. The industry as well. Yeah, the industry. Because you have no right to ask and tell and complain to people when clients are asking for bargain prices because you refuse to indulge or in invest in original software. It works both ways, you know? It's like karma. You don't want to spend money on uh, original software, then why should anyone spend their hard-earned money on your services? It's just the way it is, right? Um, okay, so Emily has got a lot to share as well. Uh, she said, uh, I mean too, when I was learning, I used to have a pirated version of PS, CS5, but when I went into, when it, when I went into business, I bought a real license. Yeah, same here. Uh, I'm very proud to say all my Adobe software is all original. All my Capture One, of course, is original. <laughs> if I use my third, <laughs> I should be fired. Um, Naji has work. Um, let me get the link. Uh, oh dear. I just realized I, I haven't been sharing your, your link. Um, no worries. I, did, I think I did just now. Uh, so I'll just share it again. Okay, so... Where is my... There you go. So her Instagram is... Uh, Oh, I, I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, oh, I just realized my other browser is actually behind the, the Zoom, but I can't switch over now because I am actually having the interview session with you. Yep, so that's, uh, that's her Instagram, uh, Emily, so you can take a look at it as well. Um, yeah, so I think, I think uh, wow, we, we, we really got, got it all going for, for the anti piracy movement. <laughs> 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 so, anyway. Um, Quick question, if anyone mm-hmm. wants to engage you for a commercial project, what would be the criteria that you look out for? Do you ask for the budget of the clients and if they don't meet a certain budget, do you reject them? Or is it something that uh, you feel is worthwhile doing, something that's challenging that you want to do? Because you did share that you are uh, you know, always looking for opportunities for challenging yourself. Or are you okay as long as you know there's 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 a, a certain stake like money involved like you know they're willing to pay you and you know, all that, but some 
artist would say no still or reject the project let's say if it goes against their ethics so what about mm-hmm. yourself what, what what would the criteria be when it comes to you know potential clients to work with you um of course in the first place i will ask for their brief like the requirements that you wanted like whether I able to deliver, whether I am the right person that you are looking for. Mm. Because I believe as a client, you just like kind of like doing the surveys, finding people who can do the job. Yeah. So I will make sure that if I able to do the job, I will able to deliver the promise for you. And if I'm not the right person for that job, I will say, I will recommend someone else who can mm. do better job yes. for you. Because Fantastic. I think the idea is, it's not about who get the job, mm. but it's more like who able to provide the right services for the clients. Excellent. I believe in that because at one point uh, it's not like I'm take, I, I wanted to get the job all by, by myself like you know not showing to people but it's, it's like more to finding the right people to do that yes so that would be my, my first questions I will ask and and if I able I have a team who can do that I will say all right I uh, I will say that we can do this and mm-hmm. what you have in mind what is your visuals whether it actually meet our, our way of the way we do things, our workflow. It mm-hmm. is something that we have done before. We will be we 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 will be very transparent, lah. Meaning like, oh, we never tried this, but we would love to try this something right. with you, these new things with you. I will say that. But mm-hmm. if it's something that we already did, we will say, oh, this is our, this is how we did it. Because certain clients, you know, they 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 have the imaginations or visuals on how to do things, but they kind of like still have a lot of question marks. Yeah. So they always sometimes need our consultations and advice on how to make it in the right way, uh, things like that. So I think it's also part of our responsibility to educate them mm-hmm. in a way on how to do this and how to deliver this, all of that. And it, it, for me, it wasn't all about money. Uh, money is just, like I said, it's just you put a price tag to it so that it has value. Yes. So yeah. of course, when you like have a proper brief with the clients, you have, you will ask for the budgets and I say, okay, if this is your budget, this is what we can give within that budget. If you, if you wanted to have something more, you have more budgets, we're able to add more. This is the value, the added value that we're able to give inside all of that. It's always like about communications, yep. making sure that everyone's in the same page. Yep. So that, you know, like in the end, you just wanted to have a really nice output for yourself, for mm-hmm. the clients. And also, you can, grow, because you, you, you're going to use that work to grow your business, right? Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, of course. And, and, and I absolutely love the fact that you are very much aligned with a proper uh, business uh, personality because when it comes to being a creative, a lot of creators out there, they are so focused on skill sets, they are so focused on the gear, they are so focused on creating content that they forgot the aspect of business and marketing. And I think mm. uh, for your case, you are very well aware of this and uh, I think it's very helpful you. with how you can actually grow as a business person because at the end of the day you 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 don't just see yourself as an artist you don't just see yourself mm-hmm. as a creator you actually see yourself as a business owner as well. and that's something that's very important um which is also unfortunately missing in a lot of the mindsets of freelancers out there and i really think that this is actually pretty good advice um emily says your work is lovely Naj- najiha ah, thank you so much emily would love to link with you yeah love she's, she's really awesome you. she's really awesome i i and and you know what her, her, she's also a streamer. Uh, I'm not sure if uh, Emily still streams these days, but she does stream from time to time with uh, with regards to retouching live. And oh, you still do? Yeah, you're back. I would love to see that. Drop yeah, yeah. the links. Do do follow her on Twitch as well. We we do have a very big, growing um uh what do you call it community of uh, live streamers who do photography. But unfortunately, most of them are based in uh, the other part of the world. In mm-hmm. Asia, there's only myself and a few others, so it's quite rare. But mm-hmm. uh, it, it's good if we can actually start a community. Uh, perhaps you yourself, you can actually start a Twitch channel focusing on your live streaming uh, you know, workshops and things like that. And because you know yeah, I stream on Tuesdays and Saturdays, maybe we can work something out like a schedule back to back. So you can do a Wednesday and Sunday, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that would be great. Yeah, yeah. It's something worth looking into. Oh, uh, Emily is actually streaming on Fridays. So yeah, let's let's check it out. But anyway, um just a reminder for you guys who are you know first time tuning in to my live stream. Satellite link. If so Friday is not sharing with you guys uh my existing <laughs> existing my current schedule when it comes to my live stream mm-hmm. uh, at the same time also if you guys want to reach out to me you can uh, actually hit Satellite me up link on my contact you can actually email out to me if you have any questions whatsoever or if you have any uh, photos you want to share with me you can actually send me by email and uh, do some critique and things like that okay so uh, Najiha uh, where yep. and how can 
potential clients reach out to you? Can you share, just share us, uh, share, share us, share with us your <laughs> website link where they can contact you directly. So you can just go to my website, Nadia. Oh, no, share, com. share, share on screen. Oh, show, show. Show on screen. Yes. Oh, sorry. Yes. Oh, uh, wait. Uh, okay. Show it, show it. <laughs> I thought you just like. Uh... Yeah. In the meantime, for those people at watching at home, uh, now is actually the best time. If you have any questions for Najiha, this is the best time to ask her while she's still here. Uh, anything to do with her, whether she's still doing shoots and stuff like that, whether she's got any upcoming workshops or any upcoming webinars and seminars or whether she's got an upcoming project that you want her to share, uh, now's the best time. Uh, we have a Q&A segment right now. But in any case, uh, Najia, take it away. Where can people reach out to you? Uh, so this is my official website, najiahnajla.com. Make sure you, print, uh, you spell it with double A. <laughs> That's my name, najiahnajla.com. Uh -huh. And you can contact on this part where you can just press the contact uh, segment and then just like drop anything, any message they wanted to get to me. Oh. Uh, but I also I think I left my email as well at the end of this. Uh, yes, you can like to get in touch. You can email me over here, najanajala 75 at gmail.com. Um, and what else? You can reach out to my Instagram. I, I sorry, I am active. Can I just like <laughs> uh, log in to continue? Do I yeah, you can to? log in to any of them. It's okay. I need to follow your, your uh. lifetime project account. Yeah, all of them are also sharing basics. I have two for now. Three. I have a lot actually. Also for my film film photos as well. Actually, okay, this is my um Instagram. Yeah. Uh so you can see I this one is kind of like my personal uh blog where I share mm -hmm. like my activity, things that ha has been happening. I'm trying to make it like like the highlight of my life. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I would love to see how I've been growing, like things I did in the past and then how I've grown things that I've achieved uh, this year, last year, all of that. Uh, it's, it's kind of like a mix of myself and also my friends, things that, things that I developed, my announcement, my mm. classes or whatever, all of these. So cool. you can reach me on Instagram as well. I kind of like active on Instagram. <laughs> yeah, okay. I, I, and, I've actually started following your uh, a lifetime projects. Now, I'm just curious, why is project spelled with an X and not a C? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it was just like trying to make it kind of fancy a bit. Ah, and... okay. Okay. It's, it's always mm -hmm. cool to ask people um, for the origin story, like how they story came away. Story behind something, it, right? Yeah. yeah. So I thought, I thought that the X actually stands for something, but I guess it's just, oh, it's cool. <laughs> yeah. Awesome, awesome. Okay. So anyway, uh, I don't think there's any questions. I think we pretty much covered everything during the entire episode. So um, Najiha, do you have any uh, advice to the audience, to those who are expert? not expiring, aspiring to become professionals like yourself, especially um, the female photographers and videographers out there. All right. Um, my advice, I'm not going to say advice, I'm going to say like tips, I don't know. Like, um, so I think you just keep doing things that you love doing. One thing that one of a friend of mine also sh advised me or shared something is he said that um, if you have your own thing right now. If you have your own thing, if you don't have your own thing, find it, try to develop it, try to grow it. Once you have your own thing, own it and also grow that thing. So I think you have to just like keep on growing things, don't do things halfway. You will never know like where are you heading, right? So at one point you'll never know who's gonna you're gonna meet. Like like me myself, I met Mez. We just like recently connected and then this is where we are now. So all of that I mean just just keep on doing things that you love doing. Yep. And I think it's always good to keep out for keep a lookout for opportunities, and mm -hmm. uh, based on your history, about how you always, you know, follow your destiny to 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 obey the laws of attraction. <laughs> okay, be present. Right. Be present. Yeah. If you feel that there's a there's a pull somewhere telling you to go somewhere, get get there. Just just go for it. Okay, and and I think uh, this is this is really fantastic. Anyway. Uh, Najiha, thank you so much for joining me this evening. It's been fantastic, so phenomenal working with you and I really hope that we can collaborate someday uh, and do something really epic together. Um, yeah, I will personally uh, uh, reach out to you um, with regards to Capture One because I, I think um, I would like to work out something with you and do some kind of collaboration since you are uh, a fantastic trainer, a very skilled thank photographer and so shooter. Much. Thank um, you so much. Yeah, and, and, and it's, it's just so lovely having you on the show. So, uh, thank I'll... you for having me. Thank you for inviting me as well. Yeah, thank you so much. No, it's, it's my privilege to have you on the show. Um, okay, so I'll, I'll put you on mute first and I'll speak to you a bit. Uh, just hang in there on the 
Zoom while I do my closing and uh, I'll speak to you right after. Okay, so stand by. Okay, so for those people who are watching at home right now, I would appreciate it very much if you guys can take some time to just look at uh, my Razer tip stream. As you, some of you guys know that I'm actually supported by Razer right now for my live stream. I'm a hashtag Razer streamer. It's official as of last Friday. So if you guys can, uh, maybe what you can do is hit the QR code over here to uh, show your support for the channel by <laughs> leaving some tips through Razer Shots on the Razer tip stream. At the same time also, you can hit me with no, don't hit me. <laughs> hit me up with a follow or a subscribe. Uh, I really appreciate it very much if you guys could do that as well. And uh, one of the things I just want to share with you guys is uh, our upcoming episode with regards to this live stream channel. We're going to have someone really epic and awesome coming all the way from Indonesia this coming Saturday. So 11th of July 2020 at 5 p.m. Singapore time plus 8 GMT. B there or B square. We're gonna have Seno Hario all the way from Indonesia. Uh, you can see this is actually him, and that's actually his own figurine. He actually is a toy photographer who also does pre wedding shoots as well, and he's a really phenomenal photographer. Um, if you are into Star Wars, you need to watch this. I mean, check out his works, it's phenomenal, it's crazy. He is an official photographer for Sideshow Collectibles. So, um, and again, uh, he's one of, the, one of the few photographers in Indonesia who's recognized by a worldwide audience when it comes to toy photography and he is he's just spectacular I, I'm, I'm so excited to have him on the show um, and I think uh, one of the things that I just want to share with you guys is that at the end of the day um, we've got so many support for the channel and if you guys stay on and show more support for this channel we will have more support for the stream as well in terms of um, giveaways okay let's say for example Hey, thank you so much V27V for the Twitch Prime subscription. Uh, we also have got some... Oh, totally blank out for a while. Giveaways coming up soon. I, I, I can't share with you what it is yet. But uh, if you guys come and follow and subscribe to this channel, you will be able to keep abreast with the uh, notifications when we come on live. So you won't miss a chance to win some epic giveaways i almost said the brand name because <laughs> i'm working on something right now um in the past we actually had an ezo monitor that's worth one thousand sing dollars that got given away to a lucky winner on the live stream who's just you know present uh we also have given away a wacom intuos pro small uh we have also given away uh two one year pro subscription to smart mark and that's worth 360 us dollars we've also given away about a thousand dollars worth of uh capture one pro 20 license keys as well uh, we've also given away quite a fair bit of things and um, I am actually looking into my own inventory to see what else I can give away right right now we actually do have uh, an episode with featuring Archie Kwa from the previous uh, episode he is from Indonesia as well he's giving away a Polaroid Spectra camera from his own personal collection to one of the lucky members uh, who will be announced this coming Saturday during the show I'll, I'll announce the winner then so do show your support so that you guys can be uh you know a lucky winner someday all right and with that thank you so much i'm just gonna share with you guys again when uh where you can donate to the channel thank you friday so friday is gonna share with you guys where you can uh show support for this uh for this live stream you can go by razor tip stream or you can go straight to my paypal or coffee as well so if you want to buy me a coffee hit me up on the coffee.com okay so um Again, schedule, in case you missed it, do bookmark this channel, follow, subscribe, I live stream without fail every Tuesday and every Saturday. So every Tuesday at 8pm Singapore time and every Saturday at 5pm Singapore time. Sometimes 2 hours long, sometimes it drags up to 3 hours depending on who we have and you know in this case Najia has got so much to share, she is so awesome. Um, it, it, it's been wonderful and it's my privilege to actually host uh, wonderful photographers from all over the world. Uh, just to share with you guys, in upcoming episodes, we are actually going to have more epic guests. Uh, I'm going to have someone from UK. I'm going to have someone from the US. Uh, the one from the US is going to be really exciting because you may have definitely... No, no. you. I, I won't say the word me. I will say you definitely have seen his works if you have watched movies. Okay, movies from Hollywood. You've seen all those posters. He is a retouching artist who did all that. So we're going to have one of uh, one of these. We're going to have him on the show. We're going to have uh, Dennis Dunbar who is a phenomenal retouching artist who has worked with Hollywood Studios to create those breathtaking movie posters that you've probably seen around somewhere. Uh, we're also going to have um, David Sheldrick probably sometime in August where, when we, uh, where we discuss a little bit further on his inspirational story 
of how at a tender young age of 20 something he's able to open up major studios all over United Kingdom so these are all inspirational stories that I would like to I would like you guys to to you know be a part of so stay tuned for all those I'll see you guys when I come back this Saturday at 5 p.m. so stay tuned for that as well with Senor Hario okay Whew, that's it for today thank you good night stay safe I'll see you when I see you bye bye Come with me And you'll be In a world of your imagination Take a look And you'll see Into your imagination Spin traveling in the world of my creation. What we'll see will defy explanation. On three, one, two.